and I still wake up with a little guy saluting me. It's the Wake Up Call with KB and Andy. Wake up! Wake up, we have pal. They need a wake up call. Someday this country's gonna wake up. Wake up and smell the coffee. We are de-icing Santa's plane here on Christmas morning. Christmas has been delayed. You imagine if they said that one year? <laughs> Kids wake up. I got a good one on this. Mother Nature has reared her ugly N- head. Not enough snow. Go back to bed, everyone. We'll I'm see sorry. at 10 a.m. You have your you have your gym dance pullover and everything else on. I got my master's you shirt. Got the, you got the master shirt, which got only the costs logo. $385. You know. I think it was a graduation <laughs> present a few years ago. <laughs> there you ago. go. I feel bad for you. I thought of you uh, yesterday. They're like, yeah, they're, the Scott Van Pels like, the rain's moving through, and it's going to be pretty bad. We might not start the tournament to 1, 2 o'clock. I'm like, wait a minute. We're on from 7 to 10 a.m. What are well, we going to do for 8 and 9 a.m.? Me and Mark we're going to watch you watch, I uh, almost said hockey, watch golf. What, what, what's the sub-air <laughs> system, right? Haven't we heard all this talk about the sub-air system? Is that what sucks the water At Augusta into the National, <laughs> we are under a delay right now looks nasty. from Augusta. The last update I saw was 9 a.m. would be the earliest uh, they would go off. Stress on earliest there. They're supposed to start at 8, so right now we're just at an hour delay, but Oh, boy, you talk oh. about a gut punch. And, and then well, if, if it's you, anything like the weather here, I, I was totally say, understand. If you want to add insult to injury, and I say this in all seriousness, that might have been the worst, most flooded roadways I've ever gone through to come to work. Dude, it was bad. Yeah. It, and the it, pitch black nature doesn't help, obviously, but like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I wasn't even worried as much about the flooding. It's funny, you. I said the same thing to Mark Dykton. You walked in, what, two minutes later, Mark? And yeah. KB said the exact same thing, and that is the worst part isn't even the flooding, although that could get bad. I mean, it's going to keep raining here for the next couple hours. It's the fact that you can't see the potholes. No, you no, can't, no, That's no. the problem. You no. can't see the potholes. So, you know, I'm driving, and I'm like, if the same thing happens to me that happened to me a week ago, like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to compose myself to do a three-hour show and talk about where the Pacers are in the Eastern Conference standings. Don't take this the wrong way. It was the most I've thought about you on a drive-in <laughs> in the history of us doing the show together. Oh, man, it was white knuckles. Oh, my. I, I'm thinking, you. oh, boy, Thank is this going to happen to me like it happened to Andy with the old uh, pothole getting the tire? So, again, safe travels to everybody out there. I mean, it for me... Like, the lane closest to the curb, you usually expect to be a bit flooded. Right. It was bleeding over to, like, the oh, next yeah. lane, oh, which, yeah. you know, usually I don't encounter at all. So, uh, ugly start to this Thursday morning from a Mother Nature standpoint. We'll get a quick start on the show, though. Chuck Pagano going to join us coming up here at 730. The uh, annual Chuck Strong Gala that is raised north of, I believe it's $14 million for the IU Simon Cancer Center. Uh, that will take place tomorrow night. One Andrew Luck will be, you know, usually there's always kind of a marquee uh, guest. And for this year, it will be Andrew Luck. So not often uh, we see him making public appearances, let alone uh, in the city that he used to call home. So uh, looking forward to catching up with uh, Coach Pagano here coming up at 730. We'll talk a little Masters with Will Haskett at 8. And Andy, when Scott Agnes joins us at 9, it's win and you're a top six seed yep. for the Pacers. They got help last night. Uh, and if they either beat Cleveland tomorrow night and or beat Atlanta on Sunday to conclude the regular season, we know for sure they will have a seven-game series. And it's possible with a win tomorrow, they could be in position to get a home playoff series starting late next week. Yeah, so you know I scan around to different cities and to get me, you know, me and Jimmy Cook have our Yankees fix that we got to we got to itch our scratch if you we have to scratch our itch. I guess that's a better oh, way boy, of boy. saying it. Sounds Again, like me it's going to be morning. it's going to be a long morning. Uh you know the Pacers right now if they were to start everything would be the 6 seed. And I've already listened in enough to New York radio that they are, quote, not worried about the Pacers, okay? <laughs> not, not that that is surprising well, you talk, uh, at all uh, with their boastfulness. <laughs> Milwaukee radio or <laughs> Cleveland radio? Uh, I have not listened to any Cleveland sports talk radio, but we will find out what happens there. So, yeah, you wake up, uh, and I have a doubt exactly who is going to play who at Cleveland and then, of course, Atlanta, who lost last night for the Pacers. So that is all sorts of interesting. And then for me, I'm not sure you view this as interesting. We had this conversation, KB, and I forget exactly what it was uh, a couple months ago, but, you know, with Andrew Luck being – uh, a, back in town, 
is at least newsworthy in some respect. And then I asked you this yesterday off air. He is meeting with the media, right? He is having a media scrum correct, uh, yeah. around this uh, <laughs> event. And so it's a great event. And what Chuck Pagano uh, continues to do uh, in this area, despite not, of course, being the Colts head coach, is absolutely fantastic. So a hat tip to him. But having Andrew, I mean, that is that is some. I mean, that is newsworthy in some way. And I know it's very much a summer radio topic of Andrew Luck coming back to Indianapolis or coming to a game or, you know, sitting in the suite with Jim Irsay, whatever it may be. But you know, he is back in town and he is going to be meeting with the media. That is newsworthy in some way. You know, I uh, texted Andrew Luck a few weeks back, thinking, hey, you know, would he maybe want to hop on the show and. You know, 10 minutes segment here, check in on how he's doing, life, couple girls, uh, you know, coaching football, remember, the Palo Alto, whatever their name yeah. was I mean, last he's, he's year. he's disappeared completely, yeah, I mean, for and, the most part. You know what, as soon as I hit send, Andy, I thought this will be the same <laughs> sort of, you know, batting average that I had back in college. <laughs> Hey, it was nice yeah. meeting you last hey, night. Remember Hope me? Hope you had fun. Bought you Fireball. Uh-huh. Remember well, me? Well, Fireball would have been like <laughs> me living right. Uh, I think it was Everclear. Um, yeah, hey. Uh, would love to go grab lunch one day. Uh, Andrew did respond, which, again, the batting average much better with that than it was back in college. Uh, a, a nice response, yes. but a polite decline uh, from him. So Chuck Pagano going to join us here in about 20. We're actually going to start. A series is today. Mark's two weeks out from the draft, Andy. Colts on the clock. Yes, sir. Uh, great idea from you on just kind of getting into 10 prospects, I guess, as we're 10 days out, 10 shows out, I should say, uh, from the start of the 2024 NFL draft. Who could be there at 15? Uh, we'll look deeper at some of these names. We'll start with a pretty juicy name, I think, here on this Thursday. We'll do that coming up in the 8 o'clock hour. And as we mentioned, the report is Malik Neighbors. Uh, we talked about a lot on yesterday's show. His top 30 visit with the Colts is reportedly for today. So a little bit of Colts news ahead of their offseason program getting underway on Monday. Here's how sick and twisted I am. So yesterday the wife had to leave the house. She, had a, she, she ran some errands and got her hair cut and did a bunch of other things. And so I'm home with a uh, little gas. So it's me and Mason. And he's not the best napper in the world. Now he goes to sleep at night and my man will sleep through the night. Hey, okay. So I am that's not, all the matter. Yeah, 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 I'm not, com- I, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, but I picked him up and he actually, he, Oh, he took a nap on me, which is not something he's doing all the oh, time. I love that. He and knows my, it's masters. Oh, well, opening well, round. My man. And so we were sitting there, you know, watching nothing on television. And I watched probably for the better part of an hour and a half between the NFL network and, and Mel Kuyper, uh, Mel Kuyper, who released his mock draft yesterday, I watched two shows on two separate stations yesterday, KB, where guys were talking about their mock draft. <laughs> which is, we are there. Which is a sad thing to do. So I am ready to go, and I think today we're going to highlight a guy who it's looking like won't be there, but you never know. Brock Bauer is a tight end, obviously, from Georgia. So we'll do that coming up around 8 o'clock. Again, we are under delay at Augusta National. Um, not to get too personal, but I noticed you did not join my master's pool I, here. I forgot until this morning. No, Mark I totally, I totally has sent forgot. His entry. I'm in. I totally I'm ready forgot. To roll. I Boy. totally forgot. The deadline was midnight. I'm past the deadline. I know there's a rain delay. I don't deserve to be in. Uh, I dropped the ball. I thought about it 15 times yesterday. I didn't do it, and then we got to night. I got tired, had a little glass of bourbon, and went to bed. Give him a free entry. Let him do. Let (laughs) him have no rules are rules. Let him have Sandy Lyle. That's he gets one guy. Sandy Lyle. That's it. Rules are rules. I think Sandy mercifully has finally decided to hang it up. Uh, Now I did send out the rules, and Mark, you clearly read them. I guess Andy did read them. He just didn't fall through on them. I said midnight Mm -hmm. Thursday. Yep. 12 a.m. Thursday. I think was the exact phrase I used, I had some dude respond back, hey, just to be clear, this means I can like watch a little bit of round one oh. and send in my intro. I go, Lord heavens. Were you born yesterday? No. It starts on Thursday. One thirty a yeah. 8 a.m. Yeah. is Thursday. Yeah. 12 a.m. is Thursday. Right. Did he think like 12 a.m. <laughs> Friday? I, I couldn't tell if he was serious or not. So, so do you know this guy? I, is this person I, I, in the I pool? Okay. No, no I, okay. I did not even respond. It's to just that an, email. It's just an acquaintance along yeah. the way. It's not yeah, a friend. friend of it's a not friend. A, okay. You know, yeah, one of sure those enough. things. So I had to go decline on that. But we got yeah. a nice pool entry. So Mark, good luck. Well, good for you. To your squad on that again. Will Haskett going to join us eight o'clock to talk about uh, the Masters. And you mentioned it briefly yesterday. Scotty Scheffler is a favorite right now. It's like nearing. 
Tiger in his prime favorite? Like, do you take Scotty or do you take the field, which is not something you typically say, or at least you haven't said in golf in quite some time. Uh, boy, did you guys see that um, a national TV announcement yesterday for the Indiana Fever? Yeah, I want to get into this. I mean, the Indiana 36 Fever. 36 <laughs> of 40 games on national television. Isn't that unbelievable? That is unbelievable. And I said this when they, you know, got the first overall pick. And then a couple weeks later, when Caitlin Clark announced, uh, what was it? She announced, and I remember the fever put out, hey, here's here's that season ticket link if you happen to be interested in our product, that the value of the Indiana fever was getting ready to go through the roof. The value of 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 the of the organization, the value of the ticket, the value of the concessions, the value of just about everything around the merchandise around the Indiana Fever was getting ready to go up. And why would the NBA or the WNBA not lean in to Caitlin Clark, given that Caitlin Clark was a huge reason why the women's final just demolished the men's final? I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So that was the big announcement yesterday. I tried to kind of compare it to last year's. You know, national TV schedule for the fever. Um, it, it doesn't really compare. I, I think we fall into a little bit of a trap of like, oh my gosh, the Pacers got how many national TV right. games? And look at the fever. I don't think it's apples to apples, if I'm going to be totally honest, uh, because, you know, the national TV windows for the NBA are what? ESPN and Turner, and I guess NBA TV. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Yeah. You know, when you look at the WNBA, considering they play a May through September, I mean, they could be on ABC, they can be on ESPN, they've got a little bit of CBS action. Uh, NBA TV as well, a prime video, um, and something called Ion. Are you familiar with the channel of Ion? <laughs> I'm not familiar. Is it on YouTube? I hope it's on YouTube TV. Mark? That it just shows up. I don't know if it's on YouTube TV. I think I've, I've seen it. It's like, I don't know, like those free Vs and like all the channels that are, you get cable for free or whatever like that. I, I don't know if it's one of those I things. Scroll through the guide last night. What am I missing on Ion is, is what I was sitting there thinking about. It's like King of Queens reruns. Chicago PD. <laughs> about 12 straight episodes is what I missed. NCIS. So I don't really oh, know man. where the WNBA kind of falls into no. that clientele. Another, but another NCIS. Uh, nonetheless, May 14th, ESPN2. That will be the opener for the Fever and Caitlin Clark's debut. That is at Connecticut, the home opener. Two nights later, it's a Thursday against New York. Uh, so that is how uh, it looks for the Fever. And again, Monday, that will be uh, the official announcement of Caitlin Clark as the number one pick. You know someone who watches Ion regularly is going to be like, what the hell is this Fever Aces? Where's my map lock at? <laughs> exactly, right, right. There's so many different options. I have no idea. A couple players transferred uh, from Purdue yesterday. I want to get into that. And then just to, I, I don't was know. A little, I was a little confused. Mason by, Gillis? Well, I was confused by the attention around that. Oh, I just think any time a, p- a player that people enjoy wasn't it, transfers, you know. I was under the impression like about. it was known that, uh, like, well, Morton and Gillis were not coming back. Purdue, I guess for those that don't follow Purdue basketball recruiting, they have a six-person freshman yeah, class. which is a very large class, especially for Matt Painter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a big it, class. in today's day and age, yeah. six dudes from the high school ranks is is rather it's foreign, foreign yeah, really. It um, but, you know, Gillis redshirted as a freshman. You know, he, he had the injury situation at Newcastle late in his high school career. And then Ethan Morton, you know, uh, also with the COVID year with Gillis. But I kind of thought there was a handshake agreement between Matt Painter and those two specifically of like, hey, uh, we're going to kind of pass the torch here. And this is now, if I'm not mistaken, Andy, I think there's still one scholarship over. Like th- th- there will still have to be some sort of subtraction. And we'll see if there's any additions portal wise. Of course, then you would have to have multiple of that but um yeah I wasn't that 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 headline to me was kind of like wait I, I thought this was maybe something that we already knew about I guess the official announcement becomes something that, um, that draws a little bit of eyes certainly Morton fell out of the rotation but you know Gillis will be a loss I mean he's he, he's a guy that offensively yes yeah, certainly there are limitations but still um he fills a lot of don't show up in the box score type of things and I don't know if there's necessarily a player kind of like that on the roster so Purdue Going to be a little bit more guard and wing heavy moving forward around whatever post player they throw out there. Yeah, so that was news yesterday. And then I wanted to throw this out just for you to think. Not this segment, but as we go. And obviously, Chuck Pagano going to join us here coming up in about 15 minutes or so. But I just wanted to throw out there, you know, with the Pacers being where they are, two games left. And right now, the Pacers, Sixers, Heat, 
Magic and Cavs, the teams all around them. And I guess I should probably throw Milwaukee in there as well. They only they all have uh, two games left. And you said, hey, win and you're in the top six. Win one more game and you're in the top six. Uh, I am interested in all of this on thoughts of, uh, you know, who who who, pe- who people who enjoy the Pacers want to play. Uh, I am very interested uh, in that, in how some of these teams are playing and some of the percentage chances uh, the final couple games of the season. Uh, So I want to dive into that. We do have, if we want to get to it today, a sound of the day. John Calipari called the Hogs yesterday. You might find that interesting. There was about 13 sounds of the day from John Calipari's official announcement. Yes, the the lies abounded uh, yesterday for sure. And then LeBron James on TJ McConnell yesterday became very popular sound. We want to play that as well. So we'll get you our morning scores. What happened last night in the NBA? It's a rainy Thursday hanging out with you. 93.5, 107.5, the fan. 93.5 and 107.5.
Down. Omaha! 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 On 93.5 and 107.5 The Fan. All right, Chuck Pagano going to join us here in less than 10 ahead of uh, the Chuck Strong Gala coming up tomorrow night where Andrew Luck will be in attendance. Always looking forward to catching up with the old Colts coach. We'll do that here in about 10. Yeah, let's start your morning check down. Not a lot of local things. Obviously, the Pacers off until uh, tomorrow. Uh, selfishly, I was like, where's the, you know my muscle memory? Where's my Pacer game on a Wednesday or a Thursday? Uh, so we get nothing this week. But two out of three, not bad for the Pacers uh, in moving up in the standings. You had the Bucks beat the Magic last night, 117-99. We'll get to the standings, but that's good for the Pacers as they chase the Magic. And then you had the Miami Heat fall on the road uh, to the Dallas Mavericks. Luca, great again, 29 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists, KB. And for my money, that now puts, you know, now now here in Indy, we don't have to worry about the Miami Heat, uh, at least right away. Uh, Not going to have to play them, not going to have to worry about the playing game. So the Heat out of the way. The Cavs did get the win last night, 110-98. Donovan Mitchell back on the floor, 29 points, 8 assists uh, in the win there. So he came back pretty strong as well. And like we said in the first segment, we wake up today, the Pacers right now tied with the Magic at 46 and 34. The Magic do have the tiebreaker over the Pacers, so the Pacers sit at the sixth seed right now, uh, a game ahead of the seventh seed in Philly. One win tomorrow in Cleveland or home to Atlanta, and you clinch a top six spot. Andy, if I have this correct, and I'll double check with Scott Agnes when he joins us at nine, I think if you went out and Orlando loses one, I think you're the fourth seed. It, it's a it's an absolute which would be po- home you know a, first yeah, round series it's, a, it's an absolute possibility I, right I, now I you could be the six the five correct. or the four um so again good news for the Pacers last night now they win one of these final two they will be in one of those seven game series uh all right uh, shockingly we actually played a decent amount of baseball yesterday in the major leagues the Indians got their game in in Toledo I just assumed it'd be a washout everywhere uh, Indians got a win over Toledo Reds lost Cubs lost though. Uh, White Sox continue to be terrible at baseball. The Guardians continue to be pretty good here to start the year. But uh, Mother Nature, of course, rearing her ugly head down at Augusta Nationals. We talked about earlier. They are under a delay. Nine o'clock at the earliest. I assume we'll get some announcement here if that's going to be pushed back any further as we're under a one-hour delay. And we should have said at the start, Andy, for anybody driving in right now, like it, it was one of the worst flooding rain commutes in it was bad. to the show that I've ever had. So be careful out there. And your normal flood spots, they're going to be super flooded. Yeah, it was bad. It, it wasn't good. A couple basketball items. Indiana State set to hire assistant uh, Matthew Graves there. That's not so a that's surprise. full time? Because it was interim yeah, originally, yeah, right? I mean, yeah, it, it's heading towards them figuring it out full time. That's not a surprise, right? No. I mean, that I, I was, was very much something that was, you know, we all figured When I saw the interim tag, I was like, wait, why not full time? What players are going to come to you if you're the interim coach? Right. Yeah, the answer there would be none. And then something we alluded to, the WNBA yesterday announcing 36 of the Fever's 40 regular season games are going to be on national television, whether that's NBC or uh, ABC, ESPN, ESPN2, CBS. Games are going to be on NBA TV along with Amazon Prime Video. Someone did send us on Twitter, and we appreciate it, the schedule upcoming this morning for Ion TV. And it's all NCIS. Should we watch that until the Masters uh, comes on? It's all NCIS New Orleans. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so there you go. When will Indy get a get an opportunity to be on there? I don't, do, is is do the guy re- that got arrested on do, Bourbon I'll Street? Say, do you really, do will you, Malik Neighbors be really on wanna, Do you really want to be on one of those shows? Well, remember they did like Don't they say any pub remember, is good remember pub? Remember they did like a show called 60 Days In and it was in it was based in for a couple seasons in Jeffersonville. Oh, in wow. the jail in Jeffersonville, and we watched it a couple times just because and I saw on two different occasions people that I went to high school with. There you go. <laughs> Chamber of Commerce couldn't yeah, be happier down there. Good. Don't have to ask so, what they've been doing on the high school. No, reunion. exactly not. Uh, coming up on the other end, the great Chuck Pagano joins us next here on The Fan on this Thursday. Soccer Saturday.
It's the Wake Up Call with KB and Andy on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. We're delayed in round one of the Masters. I'm pissed. Christmas has been delayed. Not happy. Yeah, and your headphones just broke off at the I same know. time. Luckily, <laughs> yours are usually loud enough. I can hopefully hear Chuck Pagano through yours. Well, that's because I can't hear anything. So yeah, I'm trying to multitask <laughs> over here to get the. Uh, you want to use mine? Get the old headset. I'll back. just set mine in the middle of the table, and we'll just uh, community to use my headphones the rest of the way. Uh, it is one of my favorite events of the year, an absolute beautiful cause, and I guess the man behind it all. He is Chuck Pagano, the twelfth annual Chuck Strong Tailgate Gala tomorrow night at the Indiana Farm Bureau Football Center. Andrew Luck in attendance, and the number just always astonishes me every time I see it. More than $14 million raised for cancer research at the IU Simon Cancer Center. Chuck joins us now. Coach, good Thursday morning to you. Can we get a master's pick out of you before we move on? Is it going to start? I mean, Lord, I mean, I should have brought my arc. Literally, the rain here. The rain here is egregious. Yeah. I was expecting sunshine and clear skies and a happy Kevin Bowen, and I got to hear KB just bitching about his headphones, <laughs> bitching about the Masters. <laughs> hey, I think, I coach, think this is like D Ice and Santa sleigh on Christmas morning. Imagine if you woke up on Christmas and said, "Hey, kids, go back to sleep no. for two more hours." KB, you need to start putting some real positivity, you know, manifest some, put it out in the universe, and good things are going to start to happen, I tell you. Coach, good morning. I I feel feel like I'm in a locker room speech right now. Coach, I wanted to say this. Last last time you were on with us, Coach, you gave KB a hard time because he was being a wet blanket about Pascal Siakam. You know, Siakam's only averaged, you know, 25 points and played great defense in 40 games this year for the Pacers. Great to lose. An absolute monster, and I remember vividly, you know, the conversation, you know, <laughs> KB bitching about that Siakam trade, this, that, and the other. Lukewarm. Here we go. They're going to make the playoffs, and who wants to play them? But I think um, I think my master's pick, who are you guys going with? Well, I, I toss the question to you. You're the, you're the golf. You're the one that's almost – I think you almost made or you did make a hole-in-one up at Holiday Farms, if I've heard correctly, uh, over the years. Um. My heart says Tiger. My head says Jordan Spieth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, God, wouldn't that be something to see see Tiger? I think, I think the easy the easy one is say okay because Scotty's playing so damn good, right? Sure. Um, you know, but and Rory, it's been such a long time. I like some long shot Kepka. I like uh, Dustin Johnson. Mm-hmm. Joaquin Neiman. Ooh. Maybe people could put a little small little wager on those. Get pretty good odds. I like that. The Chilean right there, Chuck Pagano. I like that. Going <laughs> off the board a little going off the board a little bit. You know, yeah. uh, Chuck Pagano with us here on the Pay Less Liquors Hotline. Coach, I wanted to ask you, I, I know you'll be asked about this. I know you've been asked about this uh the last decade plus, but um do you get time as it gets closer to this event every year now? Do you get time to reflect on kind of what you've done here, you and the people have done to, to raise this much money, your own fight with cancer and those going through it every single day? Uh, do you get a time to just kind of sit down for a few seconds or minutes and kind of reflect? And when did you know that you wanted to do something like this that would change people's lives? Well, the last part of that is as soon as I knew I was going to be okay and I uh, I got to go back to work, and I was in remission. Um, I just figured Tina and I sat down and said, hey, look, you know, during that process, if we get through this, so many, so many people reached out to encourage uh, encourage me, uh, my family, people that obviously we didn't know, um, all walks of life, it didn't matter. So we said, hey, we get through this, we're going to pay it forward, and, and you know, as long as – I'm living and breathing. We're going to do what we can to, to help battle um, this relentless, egregious disease that doesn't discriminate. So early, early on, again, very, very blessed uh, to be on the other side of it. And it seems surreal. You know, I just I can remember sitting in that hospital bed during that green that first game, the Green Bay game. And Tina came back to the room. She went to sell breast cancer awareness T-shirts 
with the ladies, with the other coaches uh, before the game. And then she came back to the room and says, hey, have you seen what's going on? I'm like, what are you talking about? There's a game. I know we're playing the Packers and all, but she said, no, there's everybody's wearing these Chuck Strong T-shirts. You know, so you flip on the TV and, and you kind of see what's going on and what happened in that stadium and where it's at today. Simply because of, you know, it all starts with Jim Ursay, Ursay family, his generosity, the great people at IU, Simon Comprehensive Cancer Center, all the people in this great state and this city, uh, the generosity of, you know, the, the folks that have been coming year in and year out and show up um, and their generosity and their willingness to, to keep sharing uh, their talents and their treasures year after year after year. And now, like you said, 12th annual um, 14 million raised, just incredible. Tomorrow night over at the Indiana Farm Bureau Football Center, Chuck Pagano just laid it out for you right there. More than 14 million raised for cancer research. It'll be the 12th annual Chuck Strong Tailgate Gala. Coach, I, you've done this before, and if you don't mind, I'd love for you to do it again. You, you could walk us through that bye week and you walking off the practice field back in 2012, um, speaking with the Colts training staff. Uh, when you thought something was off, something was wrong, I've always felt it a bit eerie, to be honest with you, that you guys happened to have such an early bye week that year. Um, I don't know if it's fate or what, but I don't know. That, that's just always been eerie to me. But if you don't mind, could you walk us through uh, what you remember about late September 2012? Yeah, absolutely. And you remember at springtime, draft time, you know, the schedules are about to come out, right? And the first thing you always look for, primetime games, you know, whatever uh and then you're always looking when's the bye and remember how pissed we were because it was week four you know and you want you always want the bye you know middle of the season you know seven eight nine weeks in got guys beat up try to get uh, opportunity for coaches players to kind of catch their breath heal heal some guys up from nagging injuries etc so fast forward you know lose that heartbreaker to jacksonville um the uh, you know, a couple hours before kickoff that day, I had been experienced bruising all over my torso, my body, fatigue. I thought the fatigue was just football, right? Just the grind, whatever. Um, you know, so I saw the trainers before the game. They said, "Okay, hey, we got a bye coming up. We'll do some blood work, et cetera, see what's going on." So you lose that heartbreaker to Jacksonville. Go in the facility, watch the tape with the players Monday. You can practice two days, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, we had a team photo, if you remember, had a light practice and sent everybody home. And then Tina and I proceeded to go down to, um, you know, Simon Cancer Center, sat down with Dr. Kripe. And, of course, you know, I was just going to drive myself down. I even told Tina and Doc. The doc was like, no, you got to get a ride. This is pretty serious, you know. And so she took me down there and, Seen as doc, Dr. Kreit, my oncologist, said, hey, 99% sure you've got APL. It's a form of leukemia. We're going to do bone marrow biopsy just to make sure. <laughs> and it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you got, I mean, because there's, no, I, I thought there's no way. You know, we always, and then you go to that why me, you know, you start feeling sorry for yourself and, I always go back and say Robert Mathis in that breakdown in the locker room after Jacksonville, we're sitting there at one and two, should have won that game. And he said, hey, let's come in Monday, look at the tape, own up our mistakes, go back to work, no pity parties in life, no pity parties in football. So I just remembered that and just said, okay, what's the what's the game plan? You know, what do I got to do? What are my odds? What are my chances? And fortunately for me, uh, KB and Andy, I – had a form of leukemia that was highly curable, highly treatable. I was at the best place, you know, right time, best place, right time, all that kind of stuff, and got great care and uh, got to the other side of it. But, you know, it's something that, that's not, not going away. I've seen a lot of people say goodbye to loved ones much, much too soon. I think, it, like I said, it doesn't discriminate. It touches everybody. So uh, we're blessed to be able to to give back and help others. 
12th annual Chuck Strong Gala going to be tomorrow night again. Uh, 14 more than 14 million have been raised for cancer research at that IU Simon Comprehensive Cancer Center. Chuck Pagano with us here, Payless Liquors Hotline. Coach, you got the old quarterback coming out with you tomorrow night. Is that correct? Hell yeah, man. <laughs> I'm so fired up. I'm so fired up that, uh, you know, he, he had the, you know, he's so, he's so busy now uh, doing a lot of different stuff. He was just over in, in, in Japan, he sponsored a, a football clinic over there and, and doing so many things. I'm just grateful that his calendar was clear and he'd be willing to come back and, and participate and, and be part of this, this event, the 12th annual. It's what, how fitting, right? 12th annual, number 12, you know, <laughs> coming back. The theme this year is 12th man, you know, like 12th man at the games, home games especially, right? We're trying to make, you know, life hell for our opponents. So 12th man is all these unbelievable people that have been coming and supporting and 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 giving uh, for so, so long, trying to make life miserable for, for the bully, the bully we call cancer. So it'll be absolutely incredible having Andrew there and uh, AC Calhoun's going to, you know, MC a little Q and A with myself and Andrew up on stage. It'll be it should be a treat for everybody. Chuck Pagano with us here on this Thursday on the Wake Up Call. He joins us on the Payless Liquors Hotline. I guess just as a follow up to that, Coach. Uh, I mean, do you hope at some point maybe this event will start the healing process of Andrew Luck being around Indianapolis a little bit more? Obviously, he's very busy. We know how it ended here, but he was also, uh, you know, a great player for this franchise. Yeah, uh, unbelievable player uh, for this franchise. There's there's no way that uh, I make it as long as I make it, you know, without Andrew Luck. And, and that goes for a, a ton of players, you know, his teammates and, and coaches uh, that were on our staff, et cetera. So uh, I, I would I would sure hope so. You know, the guy the guy did so much, and I think people just don't understand what these ball players go through on the day to day to try to prepare themselves mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever, uh, to get ready for the grind of a 17-game season, endure the, the injuries that, that he endured. I mean, who who's freaking tougher and more competitive than Andrew Luck? And who laid it on the line? Uh, I know there was a bunch of guys, but every one of his teammates, everybody in that locker room would tell you that dude's a freaking warrior and, and gave everything uh, that he had. Uh, you know, to this city, the Colts organization, the fans, and whatever. So, uh, yeah, heck, heck, heck yeah, I, I, um, I, I sure hope so. You know, I'll fight anybody. KB, you got to stand beside me. Somebody <laughs> tries to get inside, well, I'll fight them all. You know, but I, I'm just, I'm just kidding. So, I, I, I hope so. You know, he, he deserve, he deserves that. Um, you know, I know that's a, that was a shocker, obviously to. To, to everybody, but you got to respect a, a guy's livelihood and where these players are at. You're seeing more and more people, you know, young people walk away from this game with their health and the ability to, to walk around and, and function and, and uh, you know, those, those type of things. It's, it's a brutal, it's a brutal, brutal game. It can be so, you know, giving and so unforgiving. What do you think? He he does Andrew Luck does you know moving forward, Coach. I you know he's gotten a little bit back into you know high school coaching. I guess you know he's had such an affinity for history and architecture and all of that. He seems to be a guy that would love to teach one day. What, what, what do you think Andrew Luck uh, does from I guess a somewhat permanent standpoint here moving forward? Yeah, I'm not going to obviously speak for him, but we've had many conversations about just what you mentioned. Uh, the coaching aspect, the teaching aspect, and it was always like his dream. My father, as you guys know, the high school football coach in Colorado, uh, driver's ed teacher, so certainly not the historian and academian type person that Andrew is, but but was a hell of a football coach. And Andrew always said, "Man, God, it would be so cool to, you know, be a be a football coach." And, uh, the mountains somewhere in Colorado and, and teach history to high school kids. So that would be, that would be my guess is, and, and like you said, he's already done a little bit of coaching, uh, you know, there in, in Palo Alto at high school up there. So 
that wouldn't shock me to see him going down that road. Chuck Pagano with us here on the Payless Liquors Hotline. Again, the Chuck Strong Gala coming up tomorrow night. Coach, uh, appreciate the time. You know, uh, I'd be silly not to ask you at least something football here while we got you on. Uh, coaching moves this offseason, whether it be, you know, Jim Harbaugh's back, some of these young guys get jobs, Bill Belichick out there in New England. Any of the, uh, I guess, what offseason items, what movements in the NFL uh, offseason interest you in the last few months? Yeah, I mean, the biggest one, like Bill Belichick can't get a job. And I understand the youth movement, and, and I think it's fantastic that Jim Harbaugh is back in the National Football League. I mean, NFL, you know, needs Jim Harbaugh more than Jim Harbaugh needs the NFL. So that's, that was a huge gift. But it just shocks me that Coach Belichick, all he's done for this game, the championships that he's won, uh, you know, somebody wouldn't say hey yeah you know and whether they're scared of his age or they're you know uh, the guy being something that that he's not like hey he's going to want full control all the narrative right that we saw heard about that god almighty and what a benefit to jed fish the new head coach up the university of washington he gets his son steve his defensive coordinator and now bill's you know hanging out at uw and, yeah and i saw and that coach fish, him and coach fish are, are really really close friends so now they get the benefit, you know, of, of Coach Belichick being up there. So, yeah, the, that those couple things, the quarterback movement, you know, carousel is always interesting to, to see how that thing's going to unfold. So, yeah, looking forward to it. And I really appreciate you guys having me. And can I give a, you know, a little deal where if people want to donate? Yes. To the Chuck, to the Chuck Strong, all you have to do is, is text all uppercase Chuck, uh, Chuck Strong and the number is to 243-725. That's Chuck Strong, all uppercase, 243-725. You wouldn't mind sharing that throughout the day, and tomorrow I'd appreciate it, fellas. Chuck, we'll have uh, Mark tweet that out from our show account, retweet that, and uh, continue to do that here throughout the day and leading up to tomorrow. First, I, I just want to say congrats. Um, it, it's damn remarkable what you've done and, and obviously like you said a shout out to the Ursay family for their constant support as well so many people pete ward uh those of the iu simon comprehensive cancer center and i know obviously it, it can be inspiring a, 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 as a public figure but i know you've done a lot behind the scenes as well that doesn't get noticed with this stuff texting people calling people inspiring them encouraging them so uh, a sincere thank you coach for doing that I continue to do it, even though, you know, you might not call Indianapolis home as permanently as you once did. So congrats. Thank you. I can't wait to see you tomorrow night. And as always, Coach, appreciate the time. Hey, I love being on with you guys. And you hit it. You know, you mentioned Pete Ward, Ashley Wall, Amber Sensony, all those unbelievable human beings down at the Simon Comprehensive Cancer Center and IU. They do an incredible job. There's so many people that volunteer their time. So shout out to to all those people who make this uh, event possible. Appreciate you guys. Take care. Joaquin Neiman, coach. That's where we're going, right? <laughs> Let's go. Put a, put a nice little hungee on Joaquin. Well, hundy, hundy on in the I alley. Like you want to fight Chuck Pagano? You're fighting Joaquin <laughs> Neiman, no. too. Uh, Chuck Pagano's master's pick with us. Uh, two and a half hour delay official. 10.30 is when we'll get oh, things started. Boy. That's perfect. Right Down when we're off the air. At Augusta National. I, I mean that in all seriousness. I mean, over 14 million raised for cancer research. The IU Simon Comprehensive Cancer Center. And again, Andy, you know, Jim Mercer, fire Chuck Pagano. You know, if you want to be I know. just real about yeah. it after that 2017 season. And yet this thing still continued. This thing didn't stop. You know how people are with egos. You know how people are just naturally in the NFL business, the you know macho business that it is. Uh, for it to continue, uh, pretty remarkable. So uh, a lot of people to thank, and it uh, should be a fun event tomorrow with Andrew Luck in attendance. Yeah, again, uh, Chuck Strong. Put in Chuck Strong. It's 243-725. That's the number. We'll be putting that out. You know, it's – um. I'm sure, and I thought about asking Coach this, but, you know, we're up against it. I, I am sure over the decade plus that he has had that. But I worked, you know, when I worked in Louisville, I worked with Bob Valvano, and so they had a lot to do with the V Foundation, not only KB nationally, but also locally. Uh, and I remember, oh, maybe about four or five years ago, maybe even sooner than that, at the Kentucky State Fair, they set up a 
you know, basically a couple different screens that are very easy to do for cancer. One was lung cancer, and then there were a couple other ones that I just can't remember exactly which ones. And multiple people, you know, because we advertised it and everything to, hey, you know, come out and get your screening for this, that, and the other. Multiple people, KB, afterwards, I mean, I mean sent us notes that something got flagged while they were out getting one of these tests, one of these very new tests that's, you know, non-invasive, just something very simple that might be able to catch something, did catch something, uh, and saves lives. So uh, the money that is raised with what Coach Pagano is doing, Andrew Luck coming in town, uh, you can't say enough good things about people that are willing to help the community and something, as he mentioned, something that does not discriminate uh, between men, women, young, old, or anything in between. It's unbelievable. Jonathan in the chat said, I had the same cancer Chuck uh, Chuck had. He came to see me at the hospital. He asked me who my favorite cult was. I meant to say Vontae Davis, but instead Ryan Grigson came out. We'll never forget the look in his eyes. That is a great story. That oh, is my a great gosh. story. I, I would love to <laughs> see Chuck's reaction. So that I love just KB, uh, sent out yeah. that, that, that link. Uh, again, uh, text Chuck Strong. All caps there, 243725. I retweeted it, 243725. So tomorrow night, 12th annual Chuck Strong Gala. We'll get into some present-day Colts combo coming up probably midway through the 8 o'clock hour with our Colts on the Clock series. Two weeks from today, Andy Sweeney. The NFL draft will commence. Smart tomorrow, Dane Brugler, right? Correct. Yep. Uh, NFL draft analyst came out with the beast earlier this week on The Athletic. Uh, one of our favorites going to join us to talk some draft tomorrow. And uh, we'll dive into a prospect a day for the next 10 days uh, starting here, coming up at 8.30 today. So looking forward to that here in a bit. Uh, did you dive into the beast at all yesterday? I, I did a little bit. I, I mean, did, and I always am like, where do I start? It's 324 pages. <laughs> like that, <laughs> I, that I, saw. I mean, that's the nerd in me. I'm always like, all right, how many prospects are in here? How many pages is this thing? Yeah. Who edited this? Like, uh, those are the questions I honestly – probably care about more than anything yeah i just i just can't imagine i did a and i know you've done this but you're more of a writer i'm not i put a i put a list up yesterday on uh on the website 1075 thefan.com on college basketball coaches in the off season and i'm thinking man this is taking me a couple hours to do this silly stupid article this man did 324 hours or 324 pages on prospects from troy university and like we're talking <laughs> intricate background details uh, oh yeah yeah. On these guys. By the way, Mark, you're going to have to cut that audio. I uh, got a tweet here during that segment. Uh, quote, I'll fight anybody. Chuck Pagano, quote of the year. Dude, I'm not a, I'm not messing with Pagano. April 11th. Oh, no. I, I mean, not, that is 1,000% that yeah. true. There might be a few guys you think, okay, uh, you could fight. Chuck Pagano would squarely uh, not be one of them. Will Haskett. Now, I, I heard him on yesterday with Jake and Jimmy. And he wasn't too high on your boy Rory. Is that going to cause a schism between well, you two? You know, Rory can be. It's probably more of a Hollywood story than anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, He's a little temperamental. There are probably very accurate reasons why uh, Will Haskett feels that way. For those that have missed it, we've got a two and a half hour delay. So for the people that are obsessed with one, El first off, given Tiger's abstaining this week, you got to pray mm, for the sure. internet history for him. Boy, can you imagine what that browser could look like with him. <laughs> <laughs> Not taking part in anything off the course. Uh, oh, 354 goodness. now for Eldrick. That is when he will be teeing off the first tee. So a two-and-a-half-hour delay at Augusta National. Nothing beginning from a tee time standpoint until 1030. That obviously means round one will bleed a little bit into tomorrow. And I don't like that because that means Tiger's got to no. get the glutes activated it's early not, tomorrow morning it's for the not, final few holes. It's not good. And, yeah, Tiger, stay off the Masters Wi-Fi. All right, coming up at 9 o'clock. I was nervous <laughs> where you were going <laughs> with on that one. <laughs> stay off the Wi-Fi. Scott Agnes is going to join us at 9 o'clock. We'll do our Colts on the clock coming up at 8.30. Will Haskett. We'll talk some golf. We'll do it next. Uh, the rain, who does it affect positively? Negatively, we'll find out. We'll do it next. Hanging out with you on the fan, 93.5, 107.5, the fan. If you're talking about
the Wake Up Call with KB and Andy on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. This was played at the Bowen household last night. This is your and uh, Maddie's first dance song, well, wasn't it? <laughs> Probably have to go to a second marriage if I want that to be to be a possibility. <laughs> Maddie was like, there's no chance Alexa knows the Masters the oh, kid, theme song. Come on. I said, come I beg on. to differ. Uh, Rosie wasn't too much of a fan, not the same sort of energy level. Maybe that could be, you know, Max's next nap time. We'll have to <laughs> dial that one up. It is the opening round of the Masters. Two and a half hour delay here for round one. So 1030, uh, we'll get things under underway. Again, the Pacers just one game away from clinching a spot in the top six seed. We'll look at our first Colts on the clock draft prospect coming up in a half hour. But right now. That lead-in music was for one of our favorites. We have him on frequently around the majors. He is Will Haskett, PJ Tour Radio and Indianapolis resident. Will, good morning. Happy Masters opening round. I think you're happier than I am, and I work in the space, Kevin. So happy (laughs) Masters Thursday to you. I tweeted this out the other day. I squeezed in a couple of holes when the weather was nice a couple of days ago, and I was listening to the press conferences on my AirPods while I was walking around the golf course up here and, the um before they bring the guys into the interview place when you're streaming it on masters social media or whatever they play the theme song so there i am standing over an eight iron you know from 150 with oh, that boy. music playing in my head and i'm like wow this is i feel pressure and there's no one around me at all like, this I'm might go in on a golf course and i was like i i, I look i bared down man i had to focus a lot more on an eight iron in the middle of april than i ever had before because I had that soundtrack blazing, man. Yeah, I can't think. Yeah, birds chirping in the background, maybe an azalea blooming at the fort or wherever you happen to be playing. Um, as always, Will, we thank you for your insight here. Um, let's begin with this. Uh, you know, from a betting standpoint, Scotty Scheffler is nearing like Tiger versus the field yes. stuff, and, and that's that's downright scary. Honestly, when I looked at that and saw it, um, I guess he's on baby watch as well. Should the odds be where they're at, plus 400, which for those unfamiliar with what that means, it's rather insane that Scotty Scheffler is that big of a favorite heading into today. Yeah, it's the oddest Masters picking that I can remember just because of that hanging over it. The fact that we have somebody that is as dominant for the first time in, you know, 20 years, really. I mean, since probably mid-2000s, Tiger, I guess maybe – Early 2010s, Tiger was also in that sort of mold, you know, after he returned from 2008, but not to the extent that we've seen any other player kind of have this hype going in. So it, you have to sort of do – it's a double asterisk this week. It's who do you think's going to win if Scotty Scheffler doesn't win? And then also the – yeah, what if Meredith goes into labor three weeks early? And then that just throws a whole wrench into the plan as well. So there's a lot of, I, I guess, questions there. And it's always, you know, the outright favorite hasn't won this tournament in a long time. It's over a decade plus since mm. the lowest odds on the board has actually won the Masters, which is crazy to think because we've had some big names win. But, yeah, John Rahm last year was not the betting favorite going into the week, even though he was probably second or third on the board. So does that mean Scotty Scheffler isn't going to win? I don't know. I mean, if the same Scotty Scheffler that showed up at Bay Hill and the player shows up, he's no one can beat him. That's an unbeatable player. The way he played on Sunday at the players, the way he played on the weekend at Arnold Palmer. And then a couple of weeks ago in Houston, you know, didn't have his best stuff and still was a five-footer away from a playoff there. So do I think he's going to win? No, it's not quite tiger versus the field but it's certainly been the closest we've had to that conversation and uh, i guess probabilities say he probably won't win but i I wouldn't be surprised there's a reason why he's four to one will haskett with us here uh, on the payless liquors hotline you know okay so we have the two and a half hour delay and we're very sad around here because that's happening will so my question let's put in it lightly yeah I, you know this is basically me and mark is this a collective we or is this just uh are, they're just being just, good teammates we will no, I, mean, okay. I, I, I mean this is this is like waking up on christmas morning and all of a sudden oh. you turn on the news and say they're de-icing santa's sleigh kids go back yep. to bed for well, some more hours i offered to I put on the tv for kevin he's like don't bother it's no delayed. he doesn't he want to so see mad. any pre-game. i've already watched live from 
thirteen times. I can only take Brandel so much. Well, Will, here's yes. here's the thing. We were going to be talking about in the nine, you know, nine o'clock hour. We're talking about the, you know where the Pacers are going to play, right? Where they're going to be in the standings for the upcoming NBA playoffs. And KB was going to be zoned out, right? He watching Paul yeah. Casey he uh, on hole off. three. It's a holiday. <laughs> Paul yeah. Casey. Really, really don't think should. Paul's in the field, unfortunately, <laughs> think, this year. Is Pat Perez in the field? <laughs> no, I was trying to no. think of live guys. He's down at Hooters uh, with John yeah, Daly. Probably. Uh, I was thinking, you know, the rain now is going to squish some of this together, so they're going to have to play more holes. Uh, it's not going to be the normal 18 on Thursday, you know, Friday. And so they're going to have to catch up in that respect. Some players are. So the schedule is going to change. And then I don't know this. How will this amount of range uh, or rain, I should say, change the course and who, which players do you think could be affected by some of the changes because of the weather? Yeah, from what I've seen so far, Andy, the they didn't get as worse of the system as so many other folks did. So, like, Mississippi got pounded. Alabama got pounded. The Gulf Coast got pounded. We're getting pounded right now. I mean, good luck trying to get your kids to school on time right now with Brutal. localized flooding and everything. It's awful out here right now. So there's, they've gotten it a lot better. There wasn't as much rain. Obviously, just a two-and-a-half-hour delay. It doesn't sound like the wind did much damage either. So from a golf course standpoint, it was playing really firm and fast before the rain hit. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit softer, which is going to make the golf course a little bit more gettable. But again, they've got, you know, not to get too technical, but they've got sub-air systems. So they have the ability to suck moisture out of the greens from underneath the actual putting surfaces. So as long as they don't get full flooding deluges that they can't really control, they can still probably control the moisture to a point. So I would think that by, you know, afternoon tomorrow, the golf course will probably be back to where it was for these guys the last couple of days. But it's certainly going to be, I think, an advantage for those that get to play as much golf today as possible to the early tee times. Who it really hurts is Tiger. And I know Kevin doesn't want to hear this, but it really, really hurts Tiger who had a late tee time because now he doesn't tee off until practically 4 o'clock He's not going to finish his round today, which means he's going to play until dark, have to wake up at midnight practically because of the routine it takes to get that guy's body going and then play more than 18 holes tomorrow to try and extend his cut streak. So I think it actually it hurts anybody who has a late tee time today because they're going to have a really short night tonight and then a lot of golf to play tomorrow to try and make it to the weekend, which I think with only 89 guys in the field and only a two-and-a-half-hour delay, they should be able to get everything done that we make the cut tomorrow night and we're ready to go for a weekend, which looks spectacular from a weather standpoint. Utter disrespect from the Green Jackets giving Tiger the late early. Yeah, tea I don't time understand here. that either. Like, I mean, come on, all the, like early late is the way to go with Tiger. Like, if it's right. a PGA Tour event, he gets that every single time. But yeah, late early is just brutal for Tiger these days. Uh, disrespect, motivation, Dan Hurley disrespect for Tiger Woods here. Leading into this <laughs> Masters. He's Will Haskett. You hear him on these airwaves a lot uh, around major time. PJ Tour Radio. Always enjoy Will's insights. Well, I do want to try to, I guess, analogy it, if that's a thing, maybe to the Final Four we just watched. Because I, I realize, you know, from a golf standpoint, not everyone out there is as nerdy as you or I when it comes to this stuff. So let's just call Scotty Scheffler UConn. Let's call him South Carolina for the women's bracket. Uh, give me Purdue. Give me Alabama. Give me NC State. And I think you kind of get where I'm going with this. Like, okay, who else would you throw in the top tier, like a Purdue? Who would you maybe put on a middle-ish tier, like an Alabama? And then, you know, who would you call Cinderella uh, here uh, from a, uh, you know, men's bracket standpoint? Yeah, I mean, I think it's funny because I used to do a top 64 in the world golf mashup with the NCAA tournament bracket. And so this year I didn't do the, the full piece, but I did have a few different things that were in there. And I actually said that Scotty Scheffler was UConn in kind of this scenario. Uh, I would say John Rahm is Purdue in the fact that, you know, it's, he's the, he's the big bad beast on the block in the way that sort of Zach Eady was, but there's just sort of questions as to whether or not he's just as good as your UConn in this scenario in Scotty Scheffler, because uh, probably doesn't have the same brand cachet now because of the the move to live and just sort of being out off the radar a little bit, but certainly could go blow to blow with Scotty because of his talent. So I think that's probably the easy answer to that one. Uh, Alabama, I think would probably be Xander in the sense that, you know, he's been around for a while, but has Alabama basketball really won anything of massive significance? No. Has Xander won a major? No. And he's had a few moments on the weekends that, you know, lead us to wonder, like, if he's in position again, will it be a, one of those charges 
where it's a backdoor top five or if he's a front runner going into Sunday, how does he sort of fare? And then NC State, so someone who's really hot but isn't a, a big name or wasn't a big name you would expect going into this week. Um, I mean, you could go to last week's winner, Akshay Batia, who's the last guy in the field. That's probably the easiest comparison. You know, wasn't expected to play in the Masters and then wins his way in. And not only did he win his way in, he won his way in in dominant fashion. The way that he played, um, to get really nerdy with you, Kevin, from a strokes gain total standpoint, Akshay Batia's numbers last week would have won the last 167 PGA Tour tournaments, including majors in a row. That's how much better he was in the field. And, oh, by the way, he was in a playoff with Denny McCarthy. And so Denny McCarthy has the same number and loses the tournament. Just to kind of put it into perspective how much better they were than everybody else last week when we were down there in San Antonio. So I think that's a, a good comp. Um, he's left-handed, and he hits it at this you know, low bullet. I kind of like his game uh, a little bit for Augusta. So, yeah, maybe it's Akshay Batia who parlays a win and in scenario like NC State did into a run this week. I like that from Will Haskett. I, I do. Those are those are three good names. Will Haskett joining us. PGA Radio joins us here on the Pay Less Liquors Hotline Thursday here on The Fan. I got to ask you, who's the most volatile player, like who you can't figure out where they're going to land this weekend? You know, someone who could be in the top five or ten, someone also who could miss the cut and be out by Friday evening. Who would that player be, do you think, and why? Oh, wow. Um Rory, I don't, Rory's not a volatile player, but he missed the cut here last year. He's changed his whole routine. Uh, it's just, it, it's an interesting narrative, right? Like everybody wants to see him win. Like we all want to see Rory capture the career grand slam, but this has now become a much more difficult proposition this week. I, I'm not sure if I really believe in that answer. I, I think the most volatile would be, you know, any of the veterans that we haven't seen for a while come from Liv who, you know, what are they going to do? Is it Bryson? Like Bryson's played really good golf over the last year and a half. Like, and is obviously much more of a polarizing sort of figure in the game. Phil Mickelson finished runner up here a year ago and has not played really good golf this year. Cause we kind of forget that he's in his damn mid fifties at this point in time, but it's a golf course where history and knowledge and all of that has more of an impact than anywhere else. So could all of a sudden Phil's name be on the leaderboard overnight tonight, and then he sort of sputters tomorrow. So I think if it's, if you're looking for volatility, it'd be some of those big names that are probably coming from live. But um, to me, you know, outside of the Scheffler conversation, there's just so much conversation around Rory. And he's been the one that I've kind of faded a bit this week, just because I, I just feel like there's too much pressure externally and internally on this particular week. And he hasn't had his best stuff most of this year on the PGA Tour. And he hasn't been the greatest wedge player. It, it feels like something that leaves his game in some of the biggest moments. And if he just can't be tidy with those scoring clubs in his hand around Augusta, it's going to be a long week for him. So two different answers, I guess, to that question. PGA Tour Radio's Will Haskett with us here on the Payless Slickers Hotline. Will, last one from me. It's just kind of the state of the game right now. I I, I hate it. Um, I think it absolutely sucks for the casual fan, let alone the diehard yep. fan. Um, mm-hmm. What is next if with the PGA Tour and Liv? What, what, what is the next domino to fall? It seems like it's so much up in the air right now. The merger's been pushed back. The handshake agreement is still maybe not even a handshake agreement anymore. Uh, what are you on the horizon for, I guess, from that standpoint? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty numb right now because it's so slow moving and everything that led to the split in the first place was so quick moving that I think people just expected the resolution to happen as fast as the dissolving did. And that's just not the case because of the amount of contracts that have been signed because of the powers that play who want to not give up much of their identity Getting them to all come back together, I think, is going to take a long time. I was hopeful it'd be 2025. I think 2026 before we see anything that's really truly a unified one. The only difference is that a, a year removed from last year, the rhetoric now is significantly less combative. You know, everybody is saying, all the top players are saying, "Hey, we need to figure out a way to come back together." I think John Rahm has even sort of echoed some things that makes it feel like he has a tiny bit of buyer's remorse and like, "Hey, you know what?" Here on Live, we need to be we need to be playing 72 holes. Like we need to you know find a way to to change it up a little bit uh, to get you know, the the competitive spirit of the game back a little bit. But the one thing that none of these guys can deny, even though they'll say like we need to do it for the fans, and I'd argue that most of them didn't do it thinking about the fans at all, is that no one is watching. 
this is a massive weekend for the sport because if there's any tournament that is immune to the split, it would be this particular week. And I was on yesterday with Jake and, um, and, and the crew there. And, you know, it's so weird to be an Indiana guy that covers the PGA tour because this reeks of the IRL cart split so similarly sure. it's crazy. And so what happened? The 500s ratings eventually started to dip as well. And you thought that that crown jewel could, you know, withstand whatever was happening in a fractured sort of sport. And while this week has nothing to do with the PGA tour, has nothing to do with live. It's its own entity. That is the most popular, most watched golf event of the year. If we have a decent leaderboard on Sunday and the ratings are low compared to last year or five years ago or 10 years ago, then the sport has a real problem. And if that isn't the final wake-up call for everybody to figure their ish out, then I don't know what will be. But I'm very curious to see what the number is come Sunday. He is Will Haskett, our NCAA basketball master's analogies. Call UConn, Scotty Scheffler, call Purdue, I guess call John Rom Purdue, call Xander Shoffley, Alabama, and a little bit of a long shot. Two guys that were rather incredible last week, Akshay Batia and Denny McCarthy, who can roll the rock really like no one else. Well, always enjoy our conversations. Uh, if you don't mind, you care if we run it back Monday morning? Yeah, let's make it happen. And uh, Mark and I will be texting, tweeting each other about Cubs pitching woes the entire time. Too. <laughs> I heard so you guys bitching and analysis. moaning about Kyle Hendricks <laughs> yeah. at the start of the yeah, segment. Ma- it really a shame yeah. I couldn't hear that combo. Yeah, we're two More we- Jose Quas bashing than it was oh, Kyle God. Hendricks. Stuff, Jose Quas yeah, needs to go. We're two weeks yeah, into the season, go. and Mark wants to send people back to Double A already. He's done with them. Go back Triple to a. Iowa. Hey, Mark's Iowa's yelling been, at people. No, we're here. not messing with Double A. Double A's where all the studs are. Don't mess with Double A program. We got all the studs in Tennessee right now. You're right. Well, thank you, man. Man. Yep. That's Will Haskett right there, Payless Liquors Hotline. I know he said it early in the interview, moving away from the Masters. Uh, good luck on your commute in this morning. Uh, in mess. all seriousness, it is brutal from a flood, rain standpoint. Like spots that I'm used to being dry ish when we get the overnight rain, Andy, they're flooded. And the flood parts are even, what, 10 times more flooded than usual. So, two and a half hour delay at Augusta National. You're going to probably have some sort of commute delay here on this Thursday morning. So, everybody, watch out. For that one, uh, it's unfortunate. You mentioned the the live guys. I mean, I I, I like Kepka and I like the now the uh, live guys played well last year. Remember this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I like I like Dustin Johnson. You know, he's married to Paulina Gretzky. They're on Instagram doing a bunch of stuff. D Shambo with the muscles and kind of being the meathead. The tiger like- will <laughs> scroll through Paulina Gretzky's Instagram <laughs> so this week to I offset what Tiger is declining. Yeah, you see a little like by Tiger Woods there. What's going on in now? Augusta? Remember last year, Kepka and Rom. Yeah, Rom oh, yeah. was pre live, pre and Kepka wilted. Remember yeah, that on I, Sunday? I, I and remember, Rom I remember. Uh, got the green jacket. Uh, Patrick Reed played very well. Phil Mickelson with the backdoor runner-up. <laughs> so the live guys did play pretty well last season. Now, Kepka has struggled as of late on live, but he just seems to be a dude that can flip the switch when the master or when any major really rolls around. So, again, two and a half hour delay, 1030 now the first tee time, as Will said. One Eldrick Woods, 355. Four will be Ugh. his opening tee time. And what that means, Will said it, but just to reiterate, Andy's he's going to have to play at least, right. I would guess, I don't know, five-ish holes at least yeah, uh, yeah. tomorrow at morning least. and then have what, like a two-hour break maybe and have to get back out there for a second round. So not ideal for us Tiger obsessors. I don't know he's going to be laying on the floor like you were with your yeah, back issues. He's not even going to make it to Friday. He's going to be... He's going to be limping around tonight. He's going to play two and a half hours of golf tonight and be limping around. I hate gonna, to say it, but. We're going to need a masseuse for Eldrick, and, and I'll just leave it at that. Uh, yes, thank Robert you. Robert Kraft <laughs> might have a couple in his Rolodex. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, what, I mean, I'm going to leave that one alone. We got we'll Brock just, Bowers we'll talking we'll 10 we, minutes. Hey, we got Brock Bowers talking 10 minutes. I was going to make the joke as well. I mean, I'm going to be able to find an Indiana Fever game. Much easier than I am watching John Rahm or Brooks Kepka play on the Lift Tour. <laughs> that true. is the most it. accurate statement you've said Thank all year you. long. 36 of 40 Indiana Fever games will be on national TV. Now, trying to put it in a little bit of context, Las Vegas Aces, Andy, the two-time defending champs, they've got 35 of their 40. Okay. So that's a little bit of context. Like The WNBA falls in a window where there's just not a lot of live TV on the various networks they're on. So they they naturally have more national TV games than obviously the Pacers or some of these other teams in the NBA. But um, yes, 36 of 
40. Now, it is a little bit like watching Indiana and Purdue play basketball this year. You're going to need to have, like, literally a magnet on the fridge to make sure you know where the games are. Two on ABC, five on ESPN, one on ESPN2, two on CBS, one on CBS Sports, four on Prime Video, 13 on NBA TV, and then eight on a channel called Ion. Yeah, that's the one that's going to be difficult, or the Ion. Everything else I'm good with, yeah. And what is on Ion? We said Chicago PD. NCIS. NCIS New Orleans. Whenever I go visit my dad, like, he'll watch these shows, NCIS, because I always think, who watches this stuff? But a lot of people obviously watch. Pop a gas. Yeah, a lot of people obviously watch this stuff, and my dad's watching NCIS, and I'm thinking, oh, this is this is who watches this stuff. <laughs> Now, Pat Boylan, we know, is the TV voice of the of the Fever. Yeah, you know, obviously does a radio with Mark Boyle during the Pacers. Um, and it sounds like they will pick up the Boylan feed for, like, the Prime games, the NBA TV games, I believe CBS Sports Network games as well. Um, so I, I guess just a little bit of a local angle there. But, again, May 14th, that'll be the season opener at Connecticut ESPN2, the home opener, Prime Video. 7 o'clock, May 16th, and I did see one Caitlin Clark with the retweet of the fever yesterday. Oh, did you, is this the first official retweet by Caitlin Clark? I think she has had some likes and some okay. other. But not a, not I, a full I don't, retweet, Maybe she though. did have an official retweet, okay. but I, I don't know. This was one that certainly caught my eye yesterday there. I think Lynn Dunn early next week, still trying to get Caitlin Clark on next week. Mark, what do we think? Iowa head coach, Lisa Bluter? Hopefully. The the line is out there. Let's try for Monday with her now that I think about it out loud here, right? Yeah, it's no Leading f- into the draft, yeah, Lynn I'm, Dunn I'm, Tuesday, I'm hopefully Caitlin Clark that. Tuesday. 7.30 is yeah. the WNBA it's a, draft It's on like Monday. Caleb Williams, even more so concrete with the WNBA. We know who's going to be taken here. So we can have her on before the draft, and it's completely fine. Yeah, I think a retweet of the Fever okay. probably yeah. just confirmed that. I, I know the Colts are trying it. to get Caitlin Clark to announce one of their picks. You know, are that, they really? That, that's kind of the thing in the it's NFL. That's a good idea. You've got some local angles to announce the pick. So could be a very busy month of April here for her before she begins her uh, WNBA career. Can I ask you something on this? I always get very nervous. Before we get to the check down, I always get very nervous NFL draft time when there's – uh, anyone, if it's just a regular guy who won an award or if it's a kid or if it's someone, you know, who's coming off like an illness, who's a big fan of the Colts or the Saints or the Eagles or whatever it may be when they get up there to announce the pick because there's so many people watching live. I mean, there's so many people obviously on television and radio, but KB, there's, I mean, there's what a hundred, I mean, what what's going to be downtown Detroit? Tens of thousands of people and I always get very nervous for always get very nervous, and then on the flip side of that, if it's just some regular guy like me and I were announcing the Colts, let's say their second-round pick or something like that, I always wonder if the player would rather have Roger Goodell or just some random guy like Andy Sweeney announcing his name, which will forevermore be you know, their pick into the NFL draft. Do you ever think about it? Those are the twisted things I think about. Boy, I can't say I have, but now <laughs> thinking back on it, I believe. Was it Hassan? I'm trying to think of the Colts player. Hassan Ridgeway is popping in my head. Uh, got announced by an orangutan at the well, zoo. That, that, that's kind of what I'm talking about. That's Something not memorable. Like that. Well, I mean, it's Bobby Okereke it's... got McAfee. Remember McAfee going okay. nuts? But see, McAfee, maybe not at that time, but he's like a professional broadcaster. So, you know, he can pronounce the name. He knows the football guy. But I'm saying if it's a random Andy Sweeney up there who's butchering your name, who's all nervous because he got tens of thousands of people, you know, that's your moment to be drafted in the NFL and you got Andy Sweeney up there butchering your name. Well, some know. might counter and say, I don't want to give the bro handshake to Mr. Goodell. That's – that's they all do, though. So and we're Detroit for the – I totally forgot where the draft it's, was. It's Detroit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Detroit. M and I'm going to show up. And you hate Detroit, so here we go. You well, and JMV don't like Detroit. For good reason. Um, so, yeah, round one <laughs> coming up here two weeks from tonight, two and three on Friday, and then four through seven on Saturday. We'll begin our Colts on the Clock series. Look at a draft prospect each day for the next ten shows. We'll begin with Brock Bowers coming up here in a few. Andy, let's lead off a morning check down elsewhere, though. The morning check down. Omaha! Omaha! and 107.5 The Fan.
Yeah, not a bad last night uh, for the Pacers. They were obviously off. The Pacers next in action coming up tomorrow night, 730 in Cleveland. But you did have the Miami Heat lose to the Mavericks. Uh, and then on top of it, you did have the Orlando Magic lose to the Milwaukee Bucks last night. That one won 1799. So the Bucks, uh, they lose Giannis. They get the win there. The only, I guess, negative you could say would be the Cavs did beat the Grizzlies. Uh, no surprise. So you wake up this morning. The Magic and Pacers have the same record at 46 and 34. Uh, the Pacers, the only difference is the Magic have the tiebreaker there. So right now, the Pacers still the sixth seed. They're ahead by one game over Philadelphia. Uh, there, uh, Philadelphia now the seven seed. So the question will be just how high could the Pacers climb? They could be. They could climb up to the four seed if they were to win out and get help. But you need to focus on just the only, being in the top six. I think the only help is just the Magic lose one. And they've got Philly and Milwaukee. So we'll see how that plays out. I want to confirm that with Scott Agnes when he joins us at nine. But like you said, just win one. You're in a seven-game series. At Cleveland tomorrow. That's a 7.30 tip. Donovan Mitchell did look pretty good last night. Yeah, 29 points. He's been very off and on from just an availability standpoint here as of late. Shout out to the great Matt Taylor. Uh, Grover Stewart. I was wrong. Defensive tackle slander by me. I think Hassan Ridgeway might have handed the card to the orangutan. So maybe we should bring the orangutan back if it leads to Grover Stewart, right? You know what? Yes. I don't know about yeah, life yes. expectancy you know, or anything yes. like that, but yeah, hell yeah. Oh, yeah, that orangutan's probably still alive, I would imagine. They live up into their, what, their 40s, don't did you, they? Did you do a report on the orangutan? It might out. have been the grandpa Zoologist Andy Sweeney over here. <laughs> oh, they yeah. live into their the 30s, Jane Goodall of, of Indianapolis Radio. Fourth zoology <laughs> class here for Andy Sweeney. All right, uh, Purdue, a couple portal announcements yesterday. I think this was just kind of an agreement, maybe more behind the scenes. I don't think it was ever thought Ethan Morton and Mason Gillis would return. Uh, Purdue is bringing in a six-man freshman class this year. So uh, just scholarship-wise, I, I think they're still over by one. So I don't think too surprising to see either of those names, obviously. Purdue's going to look different, just point-blank period next year. Uh, that's a given without Zach Eady. But a lot of more guard and wing-oriented around Braden Smith and, I guess, Trey Kaufman Wren. So that announcement yesterday. And shout-out to Laval Jordan. Didn't, uh, don't know if you saw this, the former Butler coach, uh, taking on a GM spot on the staff of Chris Holtman. Mm, I didn't see at that. Paul. Okay. You know, obviously you got the irony of it was Laval replacing Chris Holtman um, here <laughs> at Butler. Um, but Andy, I think that position, the GM sort of title, that is going to be universal across college basketball if it isn't already. Like, you have to have someone monitor portal, NIL, all that stuff. You have to have, like, a, literally a roster mechanics person. Yeah, I mean, you have a – I mean, NIL is a salary cap. We're very much openly talking about it. You know, Calipari going to Arkansas, one of the big things that Arkansas has thrown in everybody's face is how much NIL money that they have. Like, hey, we, we don't mind giving even that more, press and more was NIL wild. money. Do you see them give the standing ovation to the Tyson chicken guy? That's fantastic. What's creepier, the <laughs> Arkansas little – what do you call it? We have the sound. Do you want to hear calling the hogs? It, it's as creepy as the Texas A&M thing that they do. Razorback fans, let's stand up and call those hogs. <laughs> I mean, it's like a it's like a cult meeting. Do, do they drink the Kool Aid before or after this? Right after this. Yeah, that's when they all drink it, and then. All right, hang on, one more, one more call. No, one more. The best part of that is Cal didn't stay up there for the calling of the hall. Well, I don't. I he don't, split. I don't. He go walk him. his dog. I, 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 he yeah. left. It was like I got to go talk to coaches. I got to hire a staff, and I got to get players. So He's going to need a later. lot of excuses to continue to avoid. That. I've got a neighbor that's got the Woo Pig Suey license plate. I'm very nervous oh, to interact. Mm. Oh, you should interact. I've known some Arkansas fans, but you are call, calling a hog is an interesting thing to be a fan of. Is it creeper than Texas A and M? Oh no, Texas A and M is way more cultish. Yeah. I don't think. I, listen, they're probably a little close. I think the Arkansas thing is just a little bit weird because it's an animal. But Texas A and M and the 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 cheerleaders or the uh, what do you, I, I forget to even call them that because they're the they're they're not male cheerleaders. I'm trying to think of the um, yell leaders. That's what they are. The yell leaders there at Texas A and M. It makes A&M. me nervous. 
It should make you nervous. Quickly, Major League Baseball, before we get to a break, Phillies over the Cardinals last night. Uh, you had the Cubs fall 10-2 to the Padres. Brewers 7-2 over the Reds. The Brewers walk in. Joel A. Erickson got what he wanted. Two out of three of the Brewers yeah, yeah, take yeah. Uh, got one that more series. That. And then I didn't know this. Do, do we need to start giving White Sox scores or 2-10 and ten on the season? They lost again last night. They're in a full-scale uh, rebuild, uh, and the average age on their team is 29.78 years <laughs> of old. We should just do this. Which is we, insane. We'll not mention the White Sox unless they win. They also lost Joan Moncada, Eloy Jimenez, and Luis Robert to soft tissue injuries again. And Lu- and Joan Moncada is expected to be out through the All-Star break. So Boy, Shane Mark is a player. Cubs fan and Boy. doesn't have any passion. Yeah. They are a di- well, the my dad Sox. is a huge White Sox yeah. fan and he was bitching and moaning <laughs> at the Eclipse the whole time. You're going to need an arc to get to the work, get to work this morning wherever you're commuting. Uh, safe travels, certainly. Oh, uh, Mother Nature impacting the Masters. Two and a half hour delay. 10.30 now, the first tee time. In round one. All right, on the other side, Andy, yeah, time, Colt, time to do yeah, it. Yeah, Colts are on the clock. Brock Bowers, including a note from ESPN.com on the Colts, and Brock Bowers will tell you what that is next. 93.5, 107.5, the fan. Heat in cool places where duck will.
It's the Wake Up Call with KB and Andy on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Mother Nature absolutely rearing her ugly head on this Thursday morning. For anybody that's walked outside today, they would say, duh. A couple of items of note. Again, the Masters opening round delayed until 1030. That's a two and a half hour delay. So round one will certainly bleed into tomorrow. Hopefully they can still get 36 holes in before Saturday and make a cut. Uh, And over at IMS, again, probably to be expected. Uh, We saw yesterday's open test get cut short due to Mother Nature. A lot of activity before that. Uh, But today's open test also um, has been canceled. So that means nothing on an oval until May 14th after the Grand Prix. Uh, Obviously get out there for practice leading into qualifying. Later that week for the Indianapolis 500, sounded like a pretty good day for Kyle Larson yesterday over there as um, a lot of attention, and that storyline will be major. Joseph Newgarden top in the speed charts, the defending champ. Kyle Larson right behind him yesterday. So a pretty nice acclimation period, sounds like, for the NASCAR driver. You know, I'm learning, Jake yesterday, you know, Jake said that Kyle Larson, he is the, uh, Jimmy asked him, how would you categorize him at, at, you know, at oval racing? And he said, paid Manning or Andrew Luck. That yeah, good. That's I, how he said it. Again, Jake would know. Yes, I mean, Jake would know certainly much more than I. Just from talking with people, they're like, this is the best opportunity. And what? I mean, Kurt Busch was pretty good. Uh, I guess that was close to a decade ago now. Might have even been a decade ago. Uh, but he ran pretty consistently. But I think there was legitimate thought with Chip Ganassi Racing that he could win. Yeah. Kyle Larson is going to be there late in the race. So, obviously, you don't know until it all gets underway. But I think even more than Jimmy Johnson, to be totally honest with you, I think there's a legit chance here. Um, So that'll be a fun storyline coming up as we get more into that in the month of May. All right, so we're going to do this. Uh, it's it's a Thursday today. We have two solid weeks before the NFL draft. And what that means as well is we have 10 shows until the NFL draft. So we picked 10 players. And, of course, yesterday we had some fun with it if they end up not taking any of the 10 players that we throw your way. Uh, but we have 10 players here that we're going to go through one each day from today and then obviously a couple couple weeks from now when it's the start of the NFL draft and we're going to highlight one player uh, if we think ultimately Chris Ballard and the Colts will take them the biggest threats some mock draft updates as well today our first one is going to be Brock Bauer so let's hit the open Colts on the clock here on the way the Colts are on the clock All right, so uh, it's going to be a mix. This is obviously the only tight end, KB, that we're going to have on our list is Brock Bowers. Now, I did find interesting, uh, and again, a lot of mock drafts do have Brock Bowers going before number 15. I found this interesting. Uh, So today, Matt Miller, who both of us like a lot at ESPN, kind of the new Mark, we need to get him on before the the draft. The new McShay almost. Dave Brugler tomorrow, by the way. Yeah, Brugler's fantastic, has the beast up on the athletic and I just found this interesting to start the conversation uh this went up this morning uh, on ESPN.com and the question was what are we hearing about each team in the draft specifically the first round and for the Colts I found this interesting I'm going to read this to you okay this is from Matt Miller Uh, He says cornerback stands out as one of the Colts biggest needs and realistic targets at number 15 as long as Brock Bowers is off the board. One source with a rival team believes the Colts would, uh, would quote, run the card in if Bowers was available. And then goes on to talk about the cornerback position, Terion Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, guys that we'll talk about here uh, in the next week and a half or so. But what do you make of that? And then I think both of us, I, listen, both of us love Brock Bowers and really think Shane Steichen would do something pretty damn good with him. Absolute stud. A uh, stud in the SEC means even more. I mean, he's dominated in that conference from day one. Remember how good he was as a freshman? Like, And it's not like this is some overwhelming physique at tight end. You know, honestly, I don't think he would meet a lot of Chris Ballard's desired criteria from a height and weight standpoint at tight end. He's not the power forward. But just as a versatile tight end weapon, Shane Steichen has to be foaming at the mouth of such an idea. Um, You know, again, that versatile tight end, I think, is something that I should stress even more. Because, you know, oftentimes, Andy, if you bring a tight end on the field, oh, he's our blocker. Oh, he's our receiver. But guys that can do both, that leads to unpredictable things. The defense 
You aren't tipping your hand necessarily to the defense. And if you look at Bowers at Georgia, he lined up all over the field. Hell, they gave him the football like as a running back in jet sweeps and things like that quite often. So, again, absolute stud. The questions I would have would be, does he get to 15? Do you feel like it's just a hair too rich positional value? Right. That's right. never been a Ballard thing, really. I mean, he's never, I mean, just look across the board how he's drafted. I'll take a guard at six. You know, I'll, I'll take a running back in round two. So I don't think it would be, but, you know, go back to the tight end question that you asked him at the combine, Andy. You know, you can listen to his answer about his tight end room, and he sounds pretty pleased with it and believes that you just got to let it grow. And then also he can acknowledge in that answer we maybe don't have a dominant number one. So is drafting four tight ends in the last three years, which is what they've done, does that lead to any hesitancy? Well, and, then, and, and is it too much of a luxury pick, I guess would be the question. Yeah, I, I think that's the question. We'll give our scale here in a second if we think he's actually uh, going to end up with the Colts. I, I just – Ballard has I – think, I think out of – maybe you would disagree with this, but I feel like out of all of the positions – that you could disagree with Chris Ballard on. Do you think that tight end, now corner might be one, and that's probably where they go in round number one. You easily could make, they could even go out and get somebody else, right, in free agency. They could still build that room up. I feel like the biggest disconnect between potentially fan base and Ballard might be in that tight end room. And a lot of that goes back to guys that they drafted look fine, but they only look fine. And, you know, last year, the storyline, and rightfully so, was we didn't get to see any of Anthony Richardson or very much of Anthony Richardson. You didn't get to see any of Jelani Woods. And so if Jelani Woods had, you know, 59 catches or something in Shane Steichen's system and you saw some glimpses in how Steichen could use him and he had four, five, six touchdowns or whatever, I think you would look at Jelani Woods and say, boy, a year under his belt with Steichen, get him even a little bit healthier, and this is going to be one of our guys. And then the other complimentary tight ends, uh, Will Mallory, uh, Granson, et cetera, if Mo Alley-Cox ends up still being on the roster next year, you could fill those guys in more of the, you know, if you think Mo Alley-Cox, a blocking tight end, like you would kind of pigeonhole him as that, then you would feel much better. But much like Anthony Richardson, we didn't get to see any of Jelani Woods, so I don't know it's if Jelani one the, Woods is an NFL player. Yeah, it's or one not. of the bigger bummers from last season because at the end of the Jeff Saturday era, that was one of the few individual bright spots that you were. Oh wow, remember that game against the Steelers in prime time? It was great, and then you just didn't see much after that. Uh, let me throw this your way, Andy. We did this back in January when we got to the Final Four in the NFL. There was no denying you had stud tight ends everywhere. You had George Kittle. You had Travis Kelsey. You had. Mark Andrews. You had Sam Laporta. Now, where were those guys drafted? Kelsey. Right. Round three. Andrews, round three. Well, Kel- uh, Kittle was even Kittle, further. round five. Yeah. Sam Laporta was a round two guy, and, and early in round two. But still, that's not 15 overall. Should there be the general, you should wait on tight ends? And, and there are other tight ends you can point to that were taken in round one that haven't lived up well, to er- it. Well, Eric Ebron, uh, Cole Komet was taken. I mean, he's been okay, Mark, you would say. I mean, I mean you would say as of now, yeah, Kyle, you know, Kyle Pitts hasn't lived up to that pick. Sure. Granted, the quarterback play hasn't been great. I would say TJ Hawkinson's been a nice player. I don't think he's been whatever he was drafted at. Um, so you have some of those. Um, it, it, do you, is there hesitancy there of just, man, 15, I, it'd be nice, but – He's a tight end. I guess my thing is... And it, is he just a tight end, I guess, is well, probably another question. To me, it's not even 15. The way I look at this is if an if, if a playoff-level team is going to end up taking him at 22 or 23 or 25 or whatever it may be, I'm fine with taking that guy at 15. Like, that's how I view it. Now, you know, if it's like the Raiders a couple years ago, I remember Mel Kuyper's like, I had a I mean, they took a safety. Remember the Raiders took a safety like four or five years ago. The Mel Kuyper's like, I had a fourth round grade on him. And he ended up going really high. That's most Raiders. Picks. Yeah, but if it was that, it would be different. So to me, I don't overreact. And I would even add to it, every comparison that you see on these draft websites or the majority of them, I'm trying to find one that doesn't say George Kittle. I mean, uh, all the comparisons to Brock Bowers are George Kittle. And I would would even Mm -hmm. say this. Bowers probably is not going to be... You know the nasty blocker that that Kittle. I mean Kittle, but but he's known as but, a guy that can more than but, hold his own. But Bowers, you mentioned like a jet sweep. You can mm-hmm. do 
I think different. I think you might do even different things on offense, well, quite frankly, than you can with Kittle. Go back to the Chris Bauer comment that I absolutely loved at the combine. We need to get more yards after catch. Who was the number one tight in the NFL in yards after catch this year? It was Kittle. Look at Bowers after the catch. I mean, right. it is. It's a great point. It, it, it is. Why? I mean, at times, Andy, it's a man amongst boys in the SEC. And again, he's six three and two forty. It's not like this is some. Six seven. Two, he's not Jelani Woods. Yeah, Jelani Woods is six seven two fifty three. That's yeah. what he's listed as. So that's always been fascinating to me with Bowers. Uh, teams to watch ahead of the Colts. Teams that would worry you about plucking Bowers off. The yeah, board. I mean, I think you have to look at the Jets at ten. I, I, I listen. I know a lot of people have talked about the Chargers. I think the Chargers at five. I don't know. Don't you feel like they're going to – boy, their roster just needs so much. Don't you feel like they trade back and get assets so somebody can move up from one they of need these some quarterbacks? O-line help too. Yeah, so I, I just kind of think the Chargers don't go tight end there. Offensive line, you mentioned. Um, I, I just don't see the Giants or, of course, the Titans or Kyle Pitts is there. What about Tennessee, though? I, I, I mean, they need O-line help, but, I mean, could you imagine – Ridley, okay. Hopkins, so, so Bowers, Tony Pollard, Bowers, and Bowers for Will Levis. Bowers came out. Remember, we played the sound. He wants Nashville, right? In the, yeah, in the middle of the season, we played the sound of him saying, yeah, it wouldn't be so bad to be drafted in Nashville by the Tennessee Titans. More kinda, behaved than Morgan Wallen we, in Nashville? Boy, did you see that video? Okay. There's, oh, there's video of that of the chair going out. Oh, I haven't seen beat, that. And, and, like, it's not like he tosses it. Yeah, like, it's, he it, forcibly throws it. Frankly, a, a miracle he didn't hurt anybody. I, he he needs to be in trouble on that one. I would say my number one Chuck team. Chuck Pagano's waiting for him in an alley. Boy, <laughs> I know who I'm taking in that fight. I'd go number 10. I'd go the New York Jets. Yeah, Jets. I, I, uh, I, Jets would be at the top of my list of teams that would take Bowers. And I don't know who would be second on that list. Potentially, yeah, Jets was kind of a clear yeah. one for me. Drew points this out. You know, you guys, he goes, you guys aren't wrong about tight ends. So many have struggled early, but it seems like they did so either on bad teams or bad schemes. I don't have that concern in Indy. I think that's a very real comment. Well, I feel that way about Pitts. Do, I mean, we're going to find sure. out here pretty soon. And Raheem Morris has Pitts. said that about their quarterback play in Atlanta. Um, but yes, I, again, Shane. I would have zero concern about Shane Steichen making sure Brock Bowers was heavily, heavily involved. Uh, one to ten scale, realistic pick for the Colts at fifteen. I'd say four and a half. Yeah, and ninety five percent of that has to do with him being there at fifteen. Yeah, I, I just, I don't see it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a five on this one. I've already went through on some of the prospects, and I've you know kind of initially said, ah, this is a two or a three, or this is you know a seven or an eight. I could see this happening. This is a five, and it's a five for me. I'm lukewarm for a couple reasons, and we've talked about them. A, does he get there to number fifteen? Uh, I would even say three reasons. B, this is not a guy you would ever feel like if. Ballard were to move up a couple spots, this would not be the type of position that he would ever uh, do it. And then, see, we've talked about it. He spoke pretty highly, uh, maybe maybe higher than what we think of his tight end room. You know, Ballard's words, whether it be with us or in various different press conferences, what he has said about his tight end room is not totally the way that the fan base thinks of that same room. That's why it's a three for me, because I just feel like even if he's there, like the, the amount of things that happen to happen, have to happen for him to even be at 15 and then for the Colts to use that pick on him, I just feel is highly unlikely. I'm a little torn on that. I, I understand where you guys are coming from, but I do think this is unique. I mean, I, I do think this would be an outlier. And like, I mean, can you really bank on another whatever out of Mo Alley Cox? Can you no. really bank? I mean, what's Drew Ogletree's situation? Uh, I know. He's still on the exempt list. I know. Is he going to be a Colt? Is he not going to be a Colt? I can't imagine he would so, be. So those are just some questions that I have. I want to make sure at some point, maybe we'll do this with Scott Agnes in about 10. I want to play that LeBron James clip from yesterday and his love and J.J. Reddick's love for T.J. McConnell. I thought it was um, a high, high level of respect. A bit random, I guess, uh, hearing LeBron talk so much about T.J. McConnell. Yeah, we'll get to that sound. Scott Agnes going to join us in 10 minutes. Thanks for waking us. Be safe out there. The flooding is real. It's bad out there. But thanks for listening to us. Wake up call 93.5, 107.5, The Fan. If you're unaware...
It's the Wake Up Call with KB and Andy on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. Big thank you to Chuck Pagano from earlier. He was outstanding per usual. Uh, Chuck Strong Gala coming up tomorrow night. 12th annual raised more than $14 million for cancer research at the IU Simon Comprehensive Center. Andrew Luck going to be in attendance. So we talked about a lot with Coach Pagano back at 730. That'll be up on the podcast. Uh, retweeted Mark's show tweet uh, for the hotline to donate to the Chuck Strong Gala, 243 725. 243 725. Uh, text Chuck Strong, and that will go uh, to really an incredible cause. So, shout out to the Ursay family, Pete Ward, so many people, IU Simon Cancer Center as well, and Chuck for continuing a great, great cause, front and center, but also behind the scenes. So, that'll again be tomorrow night, Andy Sweeney. There'll be quite a big visitor inside the Colts complex today. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday. So, Malik Neighbors visiting the Colts today, the wide receiver out of LSU. And by uh, every single mock draft that is out there, he is off the board well into the, you know, well before you get to 15. Like earlier uh, than Bowers, Yeah, right? I mean, basically... I haven't seen a mock draft where he gets by the Giants or whoever is picking at number six overall. So uh, he is fringe top five. There was a conversation, if you remember, about a month ago, maybe even more KB, where, you know, it's like, well, you know, the conversation around neighbors being even a a, a better prospect than Marvin Harrison Jr. I think was, Dave Brugler, who have it on tomorrow, is one of those people. Yeah, I mean, that was not a crazy conversation piece. And then uh, I, Tony Pauline is the NFL guy that put out there a couple days ago, maybe over the weekend, that you know that he is seen in neighbors is seen as a kind of a high maintenance prospect. Are there some off the field issues? Uh, he got arrested. What was it about a year ago? Uh, I believe uh, there in New Orleans. So some of that stuff has started to swirl. He came out over the weekend to neighbors and said, "Y'all gonna pick on somebody." I'm paraphrasing. You got to pick on somebody in this draft. I guess it's going to be me. And you know, we talked about this yesterday. You know, would, would, would you know if he plummeted at all? Would he get to the to the teens or 15 or maybe 13? And you move up if you. I mean, he would obviously be one of the big talents on the board. And my thing is this. I haven't thought about this last night. Good. Have the NFL have him, have him uh, drop in the draft. Have have teams that are in the teens that were right on the cusp, like the Colts, of making the playoffs. Have them get a guy who's a top five talent and get him at 15. Like, if I'm a Colts fan, good. Talk bad about Malik Neighbors because then Chris Bauer can go in and get Malik Neighbors and put him next to Michael Pittman Jr., and that, that would that be a very like nice a, thing. That sounds so like a dream. Ahead. Yeah, it does sound like a dream. But go ahead. Let's, let's, come on. Let's have the bad talk about Malik Neighbors pick up uh, so the Colts can get him at 15, right? Or maybe he's there at 13 and, and Bauer moves up. I mean, because the thing is, he's it would be beast. quite the plummet. To it's not going to happen. 15. You know, no. this is not like the Colts. To no. your point, you said, what, six is the furthest you've oh, seen him I, down the board? I, I have not seen him get past number six. And then, you know, I mean, at we're nine talking nine more spots. It's not going to happen. It's a dream. It's a little dream, a little tiny dream, but it's a dream nonetheless. Uh, how do I transition to Scott Agnes? He's a dream. Well, He's I, a I think we're going to play some of that <laughs> LeBron James love for TJ McConnell. Scott Agnes wrote on TJ McConnell for six man yeah. of the year. So LeBron James loves TJ McConnell. You'll hear that sound. Plus what does Scott Agnes think about the final two games of the regular season and the playoffs? We'll do it next. Scott Agnes joins us here. Wake up call 93, five, one Oh seven, five, the fan. If you're talking.
It's the Wake Up Call with KB and Andy on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. That four seed is still in play for the Indiana Pacers as they get ready for their final two games of the season. Tomorrow night is a 7.30 tip from Cleveland. Sunday, 1 o'clock here, the home finale with Atlanta. We'll see. It sounds like Donovan Mitchell. I mean, he played last night. We'll see if he plays tomorrow night. Cleveland right there with Indiana from a seeding standpoint, the head-to-head tiebreaker up for grabs. We'll see about Trey Young. I don't think Atlanta can move really anywhere. They're going to be in the play-in against Chicago, the the bad of the two play-ins, so they'll have to win two games to get in the playoffs. Um, I don't know if they want Trey Young to knock off Rust. Maybe he'll play on Sunday, but just some items to watch. I think it is Pacers win two, Orlando lose one, and I think you're the four seed. Scott Agnes is with us right now from Fieldhouse Files. Scott, do I have that right? You win two. Orlando lose one, you're the four seed. Because if you win two, that means you beat Cleveland, so you'd move above Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, yeah, those are the complicated stakes. And, that, and then um, you would have the tiebreaker over Cleveland as right. well because you would have the season sweep. I think that is correct. And I, I, I don't know if they could move any higher, but I'd just say four seed because that would get you home court in round one. Again, Scott Agnes with us here. Uh, from the Fieldhouse Files. Scott, um, you wrote on T.J. McConnell um, earlier this week, and all of a sudden it seems like it's started to bubble a bit and probably no so more or no more so than uh, the LeBron James comments from yesterday. For those that missed it, Scott, you can react to this. This was LeBron James and J.J. Redick on their podcast talking about T.J. McConnell. Like one of my favorite players in the NBA right now is T.J. McConnell. All right, let's do it. T.J. McConnell is right. like... Like Draymond but the guard. Yeah, he's like Draymond as a, as a point guard. Yeah. He is. He's talking about TJ McConnell, one of my favorite players. Yeah. TJ, he's like a – there's certain guys that check into the game and it changes the flow of the game. Yeah, for sure. Peyton That's Pritchard's true. like that. Peyton Pritchard's Ish Smith was like that. Ish Smith was like that, yeah, yeah. for sure. Scott, I'm trying to think back on that Lakers game. It was a great performance by the Pacers a few weeks ago, and I guess either of the Lakers games because they play them twice in a week. Do you recall anything, like, specific McConnell did? I mean, LeBron's right, of course, but, like, anything that maybe would have really, really left an impression on LeBron? Not off the top of my head. I think he's probably just watching ball right now and seeing how TJ is balling out right now and playing so well. Uh, he's shooting 60% from three. Uh, you know, in a, and since the All-Star break, he's just commanded the floor and done so well. Like, we don't talk about his offense, right? Like, any of that is – has previously been a bonus, but it's been necessary here since the All-Star break, especially, uh, and what he's been able to accomplish. And let's even go back to earlier in the season, right? Remember Nembhard was slow out of the gate, not even for his own reasons. He had that kidney stone um, that kept him out of training camp early on. Then he had some other injury, I want to say an ankle or something, um, that caused him to miss time. Then, of course, Tyrese, at your starting point, missed 10-plus games. Or not 10-plus. Um, uh, missed a handful of games right there just because of that left hamstring injury. You needed him to step up even more. And I think the difference now is he's gone above and beyond uh, what you expected him to do. And on top of that, he's just an ultimate teammate. He's a fun guy out there. Um, I think he's a, he, he helps the locker room many, in many ways. And you can just tell, as I even started my article with, you can just tell he's a coach's son. Like, he gets it. He says all the right things. He's all about team. Uh, he's a guy you definitely want to play with. Scott Agnes with us here on the fan. He joins us, Pay Less Liquors Hotline from Fieldhouse Files. Scott, it's funny. I looked it up while you guys were talking. The last two games against the Lakers, uh, our guy TJ McConnell, 17 points, seven assists, and 16 points, three rebounds, and three assists. That's the last two games against uh, LeBron James and company. And LeBron and J.J. Redick talking about how much they love TJ McConnell was not a bet I made before this NBA Mm -hmm. season. I I don't mind admitting it. I'll ask you. I asked Dustin DePirac this yesterday. I I don't know if he he totally agreed with me, but, you know, TJ McConnell, he is one of those guys, he's played well enough that we haven't been sitting here day in, day out, Scott, harping 
about Benedict Matherin being injured and being out. Not that Matherin isn't a big loss. He is, and you would have loved to have seen him down the stretch in these games. You could have used him uh, in many of these losses, of course. Uh, you know, you love for a young guy like that to get that playoff experience, and unfortunately, he's not going to have any of that. But I thought when he went down for the year over a month ago, Scott, I really thought that that was going to be a talking point that we alluded to almost daily with the Pacers. And that hasn't been the case. And TJ McConnell's a big reason why. No, that's absolutely correct. Because you mentioned those numbers, what TJ did in the Laker game. It's funny that those don't pop out to me at least only because that's what he's been doing here exactly. for the last couple of months. Like it seems like on the reg regular here, he's getting 16 points, six assists, a couple of rebounds and it's 21 minutes per game. Like that's the best part. Like if you look at his numbers per 36, they're incredible. I think he's like, uh, like second in, in total points per 36, something remarkable uh, right now, just about what he's been able to get accomplished. And in terms of Benedict, you're right. Um, First of all, it was because he was kind of away from the team in L.A. to have surgery, so it was kind of out of sight, out of mind. And then there was not that drop-off, you're right, that we were necessarily uh, expecting right away. Now, you do miss his toughness. You do miss his kind of bulldog mentality to, to get to the basket, get fouled. He's better than anyone on this team in getting fouled. Um, and that's something you will miss in the postseason. Um, but what T.J. has been able to do is fantastic. Ben Shepard stepped up. Uh, the one player that we probably all expected uh, to see more of uh, was Jairus Walker as a result, too, of, of Ben maybe being out and you try to reshuffle players and lineups and that sort of thing. That necessarily hadn't been the case. And then on top of that, um, you talk about players being out. How about Doug McDermott was out for, uh, what was it, 10 games or so, several weeks there. And so you needed TJ even more. And so the combination of TJ and Ben Shepard in that backcourt have stepped up nicely here uh, since, since Ben has been out. He is Scott Agnes. You find his work at Fieldhouse Files podcast as well, Fieldhouse Files. Obviously a great follow when it comes to the Pacers as they have their final road game of the season tomorrow night in Cleveland. Scott, it seems like the McConnell attention has been followed up very quickly by the Obi Toppin attention, and deservedly yeah. so over the last couple of weeks. Toppin is a free agent. Jalen Smith has a player option, so you know he very well could be a free agent. Do you almost view that as an either-or, given Pascal Siakam's likely financial situation with the Pacers? That could be fair. Yeah, the, the difference in the two is Jalen Smith has the option to decide, you know, hey, you know, he can exercise his contract worth about $5 million or go elsewhere. Um, but on the other side, the Pacers can pay Obi Toppin – um, what another team is offering him, so you have less of uh, you know less of risk, right? Because they have his bird rights, meaning if another team offers him, you know, ten million per, let's just say out there, even if the Pacers are over uh, the cap because they they have his rights, they can go out and re-sign him, no trouble. It's just additional money, certainly, um, and it'll be curious what his market looks like, like. It's Obi's story is interesting too, just because of the the way in which it's kind of been a roller coaster type season for him. He's got to feel like right, like he's thrown in new team. They're hyping up how much it's going to be great to see Halliburton, Bruce Brown, and him run and gun and, and um, produce in the open court. Then they ultimately decide, hey, we need more defense, we need more size. So mid December they make the change to the starting lineup. It's Jalen. Smith, I think, starting there at that power forward spot. Then you make the trade. Then it's Pascal Siakam at that power forward spot. And each time it feels like Toppin without any negativity or fanfare or whatever has just gone about his business and adapted and, and embraced it. I think he's having fun with this team. I think he's enjoyed – remember, he's from New York, so that was playing at home, which adds a layer of, of complexity. It adds a layer of pressure. I think his, he's enjoyed getting outside that bubble and just having fun with this roster. And then in particular here, KB, over the last couple of months as well, uh, just what he's been able to produce off the bench and to see his three-point shot go down like it has, over 40%, to see him lead the league in two-point field goal percentage, remarkable as well. Um, we knew he could run. We knew he, we, he could dunk like he did 
uh, the previous game. But those efficiencies on top of being a great team player, while probably experiencing some pressure of being in a contract year, um, what he's been able to do and produce makes him a worthwhile candidate to absolutely consider bringing back. You got the Pacers in Cleveland tomorrow night. Our coverage here on the fan beginning at 7 o'clock. That tip off at 7.30. Just two games left for the Pacers this season. Scott Agnes joining us here from Fieldhouse Files on the Pay Less Liquors Hotline. I want to go back to the Raptors game the other night, if you don't mind. The slow start, the slow first quarter, uh, down 10. I think it was like, what, 35-25 at the end of the first quarter, but trailed by more than that. You saw the early timeout yet again from Coach Rick Carlisle. Was that a... Oh, crap, they did it again, or at the end of the game, did you think, okay, they did it again, but they learned and they bounced back? How did you view that slow start? Because, you know, we know tomorrow night and we know in the playoffs that ain't going to cut it. No, and and actually that was my response. I go, all right, well, you can do that against the Toronto team, but why hasn't that lesson been learned? It's not like you need a terrific start. You just can't set yourself back so bad that you're – in a 10 point hole or you're down by 17 or you're you're just in something so insurmountable because we have seen it cost them too in the last couple of weeks where they do fall fall behind. I forget which opponent it was, but they they trailed for most of the game. They fought back and fought back, took the lead in the fourth quarter and this just ran out of steam and didn't have enough to put it over the line. And that's what concerns me about it um, is once you get to the playoffs, let's, you're playing one of those top teams. You're playing a great defensive team like the Magic or uh, whatever. Uh, that Generally, that's not going to be possible to overcome a 20-point lead. Now, the Pacers this season have done it, it feels like, about a dozen times where they've fallen behind by 10-plus points and, and been able to respond. So they have shown they are capable, but you hate to put yourself in that situation. And I thought um, – what TJ McConnell said at, at halftime, just saying, Hey, we got to grow up. We got to learn from this. We've got to mature. That's absolutely spot on. It's what they though have been saying for several months. We need to see that corrected. I'm not sure why it hasn't to this point. And that's where you're having to lean on that second unit on TJ to jump start things. And you want to see more maturity out of that first unit to not necessarily have a terrific start, but not just have fall behind many times like they have 11 to two or nine to four. And Rick is always having to burn that first time out to, to light into the guys and and fire them up a little bit. Shouldn't be necessary now. Scott Agnes with us here, Fieldhouse Files. Scott, I always enjoy our conversations, but I found it fitting yesterday that I was like, you know what? This makes a lot of sense now with Scott joining us tomorrow. He can provide some great context around it. Uh, The Indiana Fever, the announcement yesterday of 36 of their 40 games on national television, based off past Fever seasons, based off the league as a whole, could you offer some context around just kind of what that announcement means to you in terms of Caitlin Clark's impact? Yeah, first of all, it means that the WNBA and its partners definitely took notice, like we all did, of of the NCAA tournament and the record ratings and how the – women's championship game outrated the men's and how they've just recorded record ratings after record ratings. And then on top of that, you just see the social media following and everything. Everything is clicking right now for Caitlin Clark, for Iowa, for women's basketball as a whole. And it's really been that case for the last several years. And so national TV schedule comes out and it's the fever, a team that was has the number one pick because They've had one of the worst records in the league over the last – have had their worst record over the last couple of years, right? Like, imagine, uh, you know, I don't know, this year the Charlotte Hornets all of a sudden have the the most TV games next year, right? That would be unthinkable. Um, Even the Spurs, while they had Victor Wembignano, they weren't placed one of the top national TV games. But the Fever were 36 of their 40 games. 90% of them will be available – outside of uh, just regular coverage here. And, for example, last year, the Fever had eight games where the only place to watch it was on their Facebook page. That's where this difference um, comes along. Now, it will take some effort. It might take some money for those that maybe don't subscribe to some platforms because it is a variety of platforms. You can get CBS and ABC over the air. But, for example, there's four games on over-the-air TV. Before the season, the Pacers had just one and it was on cable TV, and it was on TNT. Um, So point being uh, in all this is 
the networks want Caitlin Clark because fans want Caitlin Clark. And come Monday uh, is when that can become official. But before then, I think this is a great way to continue to drum up interest and carry that momentum from that tournament into the WNBA and fever season. And the last point here, the notable thing is the Aces, who have been dominant in the WNBA, have one fewer uh, national TV broadcast, and this includes streaming platforms as well, but one fewer than the fever. Um, it's just remarkable. It's like the Taylor Swift effect. I'm not kidding you. Um, in terms of Caitlin Clark right now and people just wanting to see her, wanting to get a photo of her and just get a glimpse of what she's doing right now. They're also, uh, Scott Agnes with us, going to be on something called Ion TV, Scott. And we were wondering, Mm -hmm. we we looked it up, and NCIS reruns are very popular on Ion TV. Don't forget about Chicago PD. Uh, You got it for you. Listen, Chicago PD as well. I was wondering, your favorite NCIS city, is it Los Angeles, New Orleans, Sydney, or Hawaii? Uh, I'm sure you're a big fan. Sydney. (laughs) Sydney, yeah. I actually have watched it, but I like the original, <laughs> like most things. I think it's just regular NCIS. Scott, oh, I did see the last one for me. I did see yeah. um, the Fever are still accepting like single game tickets. I mean, those are you know uh, up whatever on on sale. Uh, do you have any sort of feel on where they're at season ticket wise, or just in general? I mean, if you look at the secondary market, it is wild to see just how expensive not only Fever games are, but also these games in other cities. You brought up the Aces. The Aces yeah. have already announced they're moving their Fever game in Las Vegas to the bigger T-Mobile arena out there for the for this season. Uh, any updates, like, ticket-wise from uh, those over at the Fever? Yeah, it hasn't just been national TV networks. It's been other teams already. You mentioned the Aces. I think Phoenix, after Diana Taurasi's comment, uh, marketed it something like the vet versus the rook because they can't say Caitlin Clark just yet, right? And it's obviously the the Indiana Fever coming to Phoenix um, and other teams as well. I think the price in, in Chicago is over 100, 200 bucks um, right now. So you're even seeing across the league that game being marketed when Indiana's in town um, and ticket prices go up. Now here locally in terms of Fever tickets, um, you just kind of have to read the context and read between the lines right now about um, how ticket sales have gone. For example, that end zone previously, one of them had been kind of a kid's zone and you can walk around and get face painting. No, those are seats. Those are absolutely some of the best seats in the arena and those will be seats this year. The other thing is, yeah, they're selling single game tickets in the balcony um, um, over the uh, 10 day period leading up to the draft two day, two games per day. Well, I did. I logged on the first day. I was just curious. What's this going to look like? According to the system, they were gone in three minutes. Wow. You would click it like it was Taylor Swift <laughs> and say, sorry, somebody else has already added this to their cart. Please try again. Okay, try these two. Sorry, these do It was unreal. I had flashbacks to Taylor Swift all over again. That's why that, that comparison – as as far off as Taylor is from everybody else, it as, actually is relatable in this instance. Um, in years past, last thing here is you would normally have kind of like the curtains right around the balcony. No, there's no need for curtains with Caitlin. Um, you're opening those up. You're welcoming everyone. I can't imagine what the team store is about going to do just in jersey sales here coming up starting next week. Just went to StubHub uh, May 16th. Okay, that is the opener. Liberty at Fever, Scott, the cheapest ticket, and like you said, the curtains are pulled. I mean, you, I mean, we're, I'm talking upper deck here. Like, I mean, yeah. I've, I've sat up there, section two twenty six in the corner. Uh, Sixty six dollars is the cheapest <laughs> ticket to get in the building. Um, I, I'd be willing to bet most nights you can get in the building for what twenty bucks up there um, for a Pacer game, uh, maybe even cheaper than mm-hmm. that. And I mean, if you go just a little bit lower level. Uh, you know, section sixteen, four ninety nine, four hundred ninety nine dollars. <laughs> that's the cheapest ticket. You go up to the club level. Uh, you know, I'm seeing two hundred. If you want to sit kind of mid court, you want to go in the corners. You're still talking north of one hundred and fifty. So, uh, yeah, just absolutely crazy. The, the interesting thing here will become though is, and I hope it settles in so people can actually watch her. Is how much of this is now being driven by the. the uh, secondary ticket market in terms of just the ridiculous prices, right? Like obviously you'll happily pay 20 bucks, a hundred bucks to see her play. But even before tickets were 
um, you know, totally on sale. You were seeing some tickets being listed on there and, and some ridiculous prices. I hope the secondary market, I mean, it's out of anybody's control, but I hope that um, it is manageable here so that people can, can go see your play and get reasonable prices and, and those sorts of things. But this is just a complete 180 for any team, and the Fever are benefiting greatly from this in terms of just going from a, a thing you can do in the summer and a team on the rise to like, this is going to be, this could be an event every single game this summer. Um, I'm be curious if some of the national networks have reporters in daily, that type of thing. Like how much do they lean into it in terms of daily coverage? I'm very curious to see how that plays out. Monday, 730, the draft for the WNBA when it all becomes official and we'll find out, I guess, Sunday evening, exactly what it looks like for the Pacers from a seed standpoint and right now they're tracking towards a top six seed which means nothing until next weekend uh from a playoff standpoint as they try to avoid the play-in scott thank you my man enjoy the masters absolutely will do you too that is scott agnes right there pay less liquors hotline again we are under a delay 10 30 the opening tea time now at augusta national luckily i the only thing make me happy right now is imagining those new Mizuno irons that I have. Did you, did you go hit them somewhere uh, or what? what planning have you done? to do, and then all of a sudden Mother Nature said, watch Ooh. this. Next week's going to be fantastic, by the way. Starting like Sunday afternoon, it's supposed to clear up. Dude, I think oh, it's it looks like, 75 and sunny I was going to say, I even saw an 80. Yeah, I saw an, oh yeah, the AC is going to be popping. Which, are we here to stay? I hope so. We better be. At that point, Or do we get the 48 degree <sighs> no, day, like I mean, the first night of the draft for the NFL? Listen, at that point, it's going to be mid-April. Okay, like stop messing with us by mid-April. That's what March in the first week of April is for, is to trick us into think that we've moved beyond 47 degrees and rainy. You've lived in this Midwest I, area I, for I too know. long to I, believe I, that. I know what it's, I know. It Anything looks like late, late next week we're back down in the 50s with <laughs> oh. rain, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, well, thanks, Friday. Mark, thanks, Mark. I, I, I'm in time for the weekend. Just giving the weather report, sorry. Uplifting there. Tiger Woods seen <laughs> off now 350 today. What that means is he's going to have to finish round one early tomorrow morning. Not a lot of rest time until round two. Just utter trouble. disrespect from the Green Jackets and putting Tiger in the late early wave. Why is he not in the early late wave? Early today, late tomorrow. Why is he late today, early tomorrow? Yeah, think of all the memories that Tiger's given the Masters. Give one of those live guys. Give them the quick turnaround. How, how give Dustin that, Johnson the quick turnaround. How does that work, by the way? Like, do they just pick him out of a hat? Like, how do they determine who gets like, early I, starts and late like starts? Like the sectional draw in Indiana? No, I, pick I, it out of a yeah, hat. I don't think it's, you know, bingo <laughs> night at your local, you know, whatever, um, Chamber of Commerce. But I do think there is a little bit of a... Um, we want to manually select a gotcha. lot of this. We want to make sure. And they've done, you, like, the defending champ always plays with the U.S. amateur winner. Like, th there are some little things like that where, you know, they try to reward some of the past champions and try to make it cool for the amateurs as well and you pairing would think, them up. Though, but they see the Tiger Woods ratings when he's in a tournament. You would and think. And they would think early, late works best for us here. You would think. You That's know, there weird. was a reason why Caitlin Clark's games all fell at a certain time yeah. slot, uh, if you saw during the NCAA tournament, so. Uh, again, 10.30, opening tee shot at Augusta. Two and a half hour delay. For those that haven't been outside today, good luck. It is ugly from a rain flood standpoint. The open test over at IMS that was cut short yesterday has already been canceled for today. I texted Ashley. I said, How, is it still rain? Like, it's pouring. So oh. we're over in Brownsburg. So maybe it's not so bad oh. downtown, but we're getting hammered out there. Unbelievable. I mean, it's it was one of the uglier commutes in uh, just in terms of a flooding standpoint for me all right in a few we'll give away a cluster truck gift card pop quiz pimento cheese sandwiches available uh at cluster truck this week so that's coming up here in a few uh but let's head to a morning check down the morning check down Omaha! 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 on 93.5 and 107.5 the fan start with the NBA. The Pacers obviously not back in action until tomorrow. Reminder, that's going to be in Cleveland's 7.30 hour coverage here on the fan beginning at 7 o'clock. But uh, some at least two out of three good results last night for the Pacers. You had the Bucks over the Magic 117.99. Uh, so right now, 
you know, right now the Magic and Pacers sitting right there at 5 6 with the exact same record. The Magic obviously beating the Pacers this season a couple times. They have uh, the nod there on the tiebreaker. So that was the big one. Uh, the, the bad one for them, Cleveland did win. Donovan Mitchell returned last night. Cleveland won 10 98 winners uh, over the Grizzlies. 29 points, 8 assists for Donovan Mitchell. So, again, you wake up this morning, and if you're a Pacer fan, you're sitting there uh, with the sixth seed. You're game ahead of Philly. Philly are back at seven, but you're tied with Orlando, and you do have a chance to catch Cleveland with the game tomorrow. All the Pacers, Sixers, Heat, Magic, Cavs, Bucks, everyone, just two games left this season. One more win for the Pacers, and we get a gold out inside of Gamebridge Fieldhouse at some point in the next few weeks. And that hasn't happened in years. You get the gold shirts. I like that. I and like the rich that. people have to put them on in the front rows. <laughs> over their plaid shirts. Yes. Over their sweater vests. Yes. The shirt goes over the sweater vest. Teamwork. Come on, Don't guys. Don't you preach teamwork in your companies? Listen, Come on. Yeah, let's go. Do it inside of Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Uh, all right. Uh, yesterday, I guess not a ton of baseball action. We did get uh, a couple of random delays and cancellations. Cubs lost. Reds lost. White Sox are bad, and the Guardians are good. Indianapolis Indians up in Toledo right now. They actually played. They won. I'd assume we're probably nearing another Sp- Paul, Ke- Paul Skeen start, right? His last one was Friday? Yeah, we're getting close. Yeah, I mean, we hell, it might close. be today. Yeah, they they did they get rained out earlier? They didn't get rained out at all, I don't God. believe. Yeah, I don't know if they got week. rained out on Tuesday dude, they again. Dodged Those it. series are Tuesday through Sunday. They'll be back at home coming up on Tuesday. A uh, couple, a uh, couple basketball things uh, that we need to get to. Indiana State set to hire assistant Matthew Gray. Now this is full time. That this would be for full time. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's believed he will get that the, makes a the lot job of sense there. To me. Uh, that's not crazy. I'm sure that will make JMV happy. I uh, just wanted to run this by you as well. The John Calipari contract did come out. He's going to be making about seven mil per year. He does get a signing bonus. Does he a, get a dog walker? He gets in a the bunch contract? of yearly bonuses. And on top of it, he gets a lot of bonuses just for making the NCAA tournament. So basically, this coming year, Cal's going to be making, I would imagine, at least eight and a half mil uh, that first year there. They called the Hogs. We played that sound as well. And then interesting news yesterday. I thought we all knew Mason Gillis, probably the top name, puts his name in the transfer portal from yesterday. You know, one thing about losing Gillis, and again, this is the expectation, I'll be interested to see just lineup-wise. Like, do we see Purdue go a little bit more, like, wing-oriented? You know, Gillis was kind of the frequent four-man, if you want to break it down like that. But, you know, Purdue could go a little. Obviously, Braden Smith, the point guard. Trey Kaufman, Wren would be their big. And then at the two, three, and the four, some combination of lawyer, Colvin, Camden, Heidi, Kanan Ketching's a five-star recruit. Yep. Glenn Robinson's kid is a top 100 player. And, you know, who knows? Maybe they will make a portal edition. But uh, I'll be curious to see exactly what that makeup looks like for Matt Painter here moving forward. Uh, that's probably it on my end. Again, right now we are under a continued delay down at Augusta National. A Masters-wise, 1030 will be the first tee time. So I know you get the ceremonial opening tee shots here coming up. The top of the hour. It does sound like they avoided a lot of the rain. Uh, I like a firm Augusta National. We don't do you firm. Yeah, that's what I want. The firm green. It sounded the like firm fairways from some of the players that was happening earlier in the week. So now we need the sub air systems to work. <laughs> Who needs the bounce and roll the most on the PGA Tour? Well, one of the old guys. Maddie filled out a Masters pool team last <laughs> night, and she goes, "I'm debating either Lee Hodges or Mike Weir." <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, if you go with Mike Weir, he might need a trampoline in his golf bag to successfully maneuver around Augusta National. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, I love her picking that. I just absolutely love it. Uh, Let's get to a break. Scotty's here. That means it's pop quiz time. Try to win that oil change. Get that $25 from Cluster Truck. We'll do it next. 239-1070. Load them up. Pop quiz next here on the Wake Up Call. Heat and cool your man cave, attic, garage, or bonus room without adding ductwork with Mitsubishi Electric ductless mini splits. To find out more, just go to absolutecomfort.org. Your small business keeps you on the go. Progressive Commercial Insurance keeps your policy within reach with their easy-to-use...
Can you handle the pressure? Sharpen your pencils. It's time for the pop quiz with KB and Andy. Brought to you by Jiffy Lube, Indiana's favorite oil change since 1985. I was hoping for a little bit more Masters flavor from Scotty Johnston today on the pop quiz. Cluster truck gift card we are giving away. Not sure if Scotty's just not a Masters fan or what. We have Oon Question. I mean, well, what maybe, are we doing here? Maybe he's mad like us. He wanted to wake up this morning and watch the Masters, you know, Amen Corner. He wanted to watch it. He's not getting any of it. He's got to wait to 10, 30, 11 o'clock like the rest of yeah, us. Yeah, maybe he said if they're not playing golf, I'm not playing yeah. golf. So he didn't you do it. You guys are giving him way too much credit here. Uh, do we, we have an official pick from you two? I've said oh, Tiger. Man, I need to give an official pick, I guess, don't I? I mean, in, in your master's pool, you know, you pick one A golfer, two Bs, and one C. I picked right. Scotty Scheffler. I went soft there. I took the favorite. Now, what about Baby Watch? I know. I know. Well, I, I, She's eight and, I, and a half months and, pregnant and I think, or something. I think eight months I, pregnant. That's wild. When it came to the gambling apps, I sprinkled on the Xander. For the win, so who will Haskett? We had Will Haskett mm-hmm. on earlier. We had him compare Masters players to the NCAA men's tournament Final Four teams, and he kind of called Xander Shoffley Alabama. I like that. Yeah, a little under the rate. Not, not. I mean, betting odds wise, what Mark? He's probably the third or fourth favorite, isn't he? Yeah, he's Xander? up there. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's Scheffler, it's Rory, Rom is up there. Um, Xander, not too far. If he's in the top five, I, I believe. Uh, Chuck Pagano went with Joaquin Neiman. For those curious, when he joined us earlier, he had a couple others. I think Brooks he mentioned, maybe DJ, uh, Andy Sweeney. Can I take Kepka? Is that okay? Ooh. Can I take him just because? You like the swagger? Uh, I like the swagger. You I, like Mrs. Kepka? Well, I made a bet. What's her name? Jenna. It's not Jenna Sims, is it? I, I think that is Okay, correct. I made a bet a long time ago that those two would break up, and they could not be more in love then, I mean, like, who's more in love than them two? Like, they're just always PDA every time you see them. I- I'll give you a name. A well, that s- means they're definitely in love behind a closed door uh, yeah, then, a right? Sneaky top five. How about this? Wyndham Clark. Ooh. How about that? There's some value there, Mark. Wyndham Clark. Throw he, that he in there. He was not one of the four golfers I picked in Kevin's Masters tournament. KB thank you like that. Thank you for joining, Mark. Andy, Welcome. just disregard yep. on the – Disrespect Went and straight disregard. Went to the spam invites. folder, I think. Unbelievable. <laughs> we'll see if that invite comes next year. All right. Uh, we're inviting you to the pop quiz right now. 317-239-1070. It is a cluster truck gift card and a Jiffy Lube oil change. Andy, where are you going with? Oh, goodness. Let's go. Caller number two today. Two. Uh, Music Mac. Hey, Music Mac. Good morning, guys. How are you this morning? It's been a while. How's life? Uh, Life's great, man, but I really, really enjoy the show, man. And uh, I had a nice conversation with Sweetbo at the Mutt a while back. There we go. Oh, yeah. You at the Mutt? Yeah, it was when JMV was out ah, there. Remember that? Was that? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he was holding court, people bringing him mixed drinks and beer and everything else. Yeah. I Good love it. Good to see you. you. Good to meet you. But, but you guys have been doing an awesome job with the morning show. I love all the conversations with all the different people building up to Indiana State and building up to Purdue. It's been just incredible. Well, thank you for saying yeah, that, Music good. Mac. You've got a master's pick that you'd like to share? Uh I don't really know much about golf, so I would have to go with what Kevin uh, – I would have to go with Tiger. People just forget how how incredible he affected the popularity of golf. Oh, boy, the hints are going to be rolling. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll carry you to the finish line here, Music Man. It'll be like the Jamaican bobsled team right now. Uh, this is going to be unbelievable. I mean – I, it's almost like I planted the call. It, it really is. The, the You know, I shouldn't have said two. I could have said three, four, five, six, and it would have been someone different, but we're happy. You Mac know what? Is here. I might lead it off. Music okay, Mac, yeah, let's start ahead. here. The Masters scheduled to get underway today, weather permitting. Scotty, I think we're good, right? 10 30, uh, first sheet time. The defending champ, Mac, is who? Scotty Scheffler, John Rahm, Brooks Kepka, Jordan Spieth. Oh, man. I wish I knew more about golf. Uh-huh. Mac, you ever been to Spain? Uh, is it, is Kepka from Spain? <laughs> I was about to say, I don't know if that's a hint if he's not watching. <laughs> Mac, just say John Rahm and let's move on to number two. All right, there, I was going to say. Uh, John, John, John Rahm. Uh, I was going to say, Jeff Brom used to be the coach at I don't Purdue. Know a lot of, what rhymes with Brom? I don't know a lot of Brooks's <laughs> from Spain. I'll be totally honest with you. That's so true. All right, question number two, Mac. The Pacers are on the verge of clinching their first NBA playoff berth 
since the 2020 pandemic season. Who knocked the blue and gold out of the 2020 playoffs that were there in Disney? Was it the Miami Heat, the Orlando Magic, the Boston Celtics, or the Philadelphia 76ers? I believe it was the Miami Heat. Number three here, Mac. Uh, name the last team the Pacers beat in a playoff series. Gosh, Scotty, is this true? It's a good question. The Cavs, the Raptors, the Wizards, or the Hawks? Uh, uh, I love the Pacers. Uh, uh, I'm just taking a wild guess. I, I, I want to say the Cavs. Ever seen David Blaine before? David uh, Copperfield? Uh, Orlando. There you go. Good hint, Kev. The options were the Cavs, Raptors, <laughs> Wizards, or Hawks. Hint. I know, I know, That's a terrible I know. Hint. What a terrible hint. Poor Mac is so good. He's more confused now. He's just listing a team that wasn't even one of the options. Mac wrote in an either. answer. Uh, question oh, Gan- you could have said Gandalf or something, right? Neither, I don't that. know. <laughs> question number four. The Boston Celtics played in the NBA Finals. I hope Tiger plays better than me, giving yeah. those answers there. Ten straight seasons from 1957 through 1966. They lost only one of those ten finals. Who kept the Celtics from winning ten NBA championships in a row? Was it the Minneapolis Lakers, the St. Louis Hawks, the San Francisco Warriors, or the Rochester Royals? I want to to say the Minneapolis Lakers. All right, rounding out, Mac. 35 years ago today, Philadelphia Flyers goaltender Ron Hextall made history by becoming the first goalie to score a goal in an NHL playoff game. Since then, only one other goalie has scored a goal in a playoff game. Was it Hextall? Was it Chris Osgood? Was it, sounds like a pasta dish here, Pekka Rene? <laughs> or was it Martin Brodeur? I want to say Hexaw. Boy, Scotty, those last two questions. He's like, you're not, you're listening, Matt, you're not, I, get, you're I not apologize the for number those, three. Those were, some very, those were some very ball buster questions, man. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what Scotty was thinking there with that one. I knew we were off to a rough start when we thought Brooks was from Barcelona or Madrid. But nonetheless, stay on the line here, Music Mac. Uh, one and two, right? That was yes! it, Scott. Uh, Andy? Yeah, he got that. The, that the, is correct. Question number two, the Miami Heat knocked uh, in the 2020 playoffs, knocked the Pacers out. Uh, the last team to beat the play, uh, Pacers in a playoff series, the Washington Wizards back in 2014. Also re- known as the Fighting David Blaines, apparently. You remember anyone on that 2014 roster? I mean, you got Paul Pierce, I believe, was on that roster. Otto Porter Jr. Gortat, John Wall, uh, Beal. N- Nene. You blew it! Pacers kind of had a little struggle with the Wizards at times. You know, it wasn't just like this walk. Through. And the Wizards were the wow. young, plucky. You know, when you think about it, Wall and Beal. I mean, that's that's a backcourt oh, you sure. dream of. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Chris Humphreys you... was on that team. Chris Humphreys, boy, Chris shout Humphrey. out to him. Chris Humphreys. Uh, April twenty seventh, twenty eighteen. Andy Sweeney, does that resonate to you in any way, shape, or form? Oh goodness, two thousand eighteen. No, what is it? Tell me. April twenty seventh, twenty eighteen. The night that the Colts drafted Darius Leonard is also the same night is our last Pacers playoff win. Wow, that's a great stat. Did you look that up or did somebody Just put that on Twitter? Just that up. It's a good stat. You should put that out. 121-87, game six against the Cavs. Uh, boy, that was an ass kicking there. Game seven, of course, was a great game as well. Some questionable officiating that game. Oladipo at 28. Sabonis, wow. 19 off the bench. Wow. Lance with 12. Trevor Booker got in for the Pacers. TJ Leaf <laughs> got in for the Pacers. Oh, Joe Young got in for the Pacers. Not TJ Leaf. I think TJ Leaf has been mentioned about seven times in the pop quiz as a, it better not be TJ Leaf the answer. I think that's, that's what it's been. Probably a fair, fair assessment here. <laughs> oh, goodness. So good job, Music Mac. It was good meeting you out at the Mutt, I don't know, a month and a half ago or so. How about Ben? He goes, Kevin's so excited that Mac picked Tiger. He can't even give good hints. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> I don't know where you're And going like, Mac gave a very genuine answer on Tiger. You know, the he popularity did. for the sure, game, moving sure. the needle, et cetera, et cetera. I, w- I was so giddy that, yes. I just fumbled it. I just choked. I I shanked it off the first tee at Augusta. Come on, Kevin. Is that what you say when you 
have your new clubs out there and you slice one. Well, not with these Mizunos now. I feel like I'm going to be you'll be straight and narrow, dialing in. You right down the right down the middle. I love it. Uh, all right, let's take a break. One final time. Two, uh, I was going to say two, three, nine, ten, seventy. We've got our pop quiz out of the way. Uh, good stuff there from Music Mac. We'll come back. We'll do it one final time here on the fan. The laundry room.
It's the Wake Up Call with KB and Andy on 93.5 and 107.5. The Fan. All right, looks like Sand and the Slay are about ready to take off here. We got the Masters starting after a two and a half hour delay. 10.30. Tease in the ground for the opening tee shot there at Augusta National. But big delays. Tiger not going to go off till 354. Worried about his physical health. Worried about probably his mental health, too. But uh, I just care about his physical health for this week. I'm sure he cares. I'm sure he's worried about it. I did see Tiger uh, autographing stuff for kids and everything. That's good for him. He's a change man. He's a change man. Second chance of life. Celibate, right? This week? (laughs) That's what he says. We're all about that stat. Uh, well, it's key, Mark. I would say some of that activities led to some injuries for Tiger over the years. Well, off the course. It's also a stat that's like so crazy, it's hard to believe. <laughs> well, that is another. You know, it's like, God, did that really happen? You accurate sure? way to put it. Again, one more win for the Pacers, and they are in. It'll be either tomorrow night in Cleveland, you would hope, or home to Atlanta on Sunday. Still a possibility to climb even higher. Mark, you said Kurt's been hanging in there for a while. With Kurt has year. been very patient. Kurt <laughs> from Arkansas. Kurt, are we all about Coach Cal? Well, you know, it's, uh, I thought it only appropriate that I call today since I'm surrounded by uh, Wu Pig Sui fans down here in Arkansas. So I can imagine. I will tell you, yeah, I'll tell you all my friends and coworkers here, none of them had John Calipari on their bingo card. They all wanted Chris Beard. So that was definitely a thing. So, um, and, 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 well, Andy, we'll, we'll have Andy get into a little Kentucky search here after that. You, you want to talk a little Pacers, you said? I did, I did. I, I will say, to close it out on the Razorback thing, it's, it is a little cold like partly because there's no pro teams. You know, when you live in a market that's sure. only college. So, you know, the, the music artists, when they come down to our version of Deer Creek or Ruoff down here, uh, sometimes they even call the hogs, which gets a little weird. So. And, but, uh, and the I, guy they were standing up and clapping for yesterday, was that Tyson? Is that Tyson yeah, Foods? That's the guy, yeah. That's John Tyson, yeah. So you got the Tyson family down here. You obviously got all the Waltons with the Walmart headquarters yeah. down here. So, uh, yeah, and, and J.B. Hunt as well because the big trucking company. So the Hunt people yeah. uh, give money as well. They're not messing so. around financially. That's right. So, yeah, on Pacers, you know, I, um, I, I would love to have a throwback to my old college days. You know, I'm a proud Heritage Christian alum, fan of Miles Colvin, of course. But um, I want them to stay at six because I would love the six versus the three against the Knicks. Um, that and I feel like it'd be fun for the media, the old Knicks versus the Hicks. Sure. And then I feel like we have a chance to win the first round. And then wouldn't that really would that put us up against Milwaukee versus if we go to the four or five? Then if we get out of the first round, we're playing the Celtics. You, you know, know, and I think it's Boston's to lose this year. Kurt, it's funny you bring that up. I've thought about this over the last couple of weeks when it's kind of been like, whoa, the Pacers might actually get higher than six. And thank you for the call, by the way, Kurt. Um, always great to hear your voice. I thought Andy, like, wait, am I allowed to get greedy here? Should I start thinking about round two and what that matchup could look like? Or we just said it's been six years since the Pacers <laughs> yeah. have won a playoff game. Yeah, I'm probably Scotty not. Scotty just did it, what, 10 years since they've won yeah. a playoff series? Like, yeah, let's I'm just get through yet. round one. Yeah, I'm not there. I actually probably disagree with him a little bit. I, I think media-wise, the Knicks are are a sexy matchup. And you could say, well, with Randall out and OG and OB has been – I mean, he's been out for the better part of a month. I, I need to see exactly what his rehab and they were going to kind of get him back slowly and play him 10, 12, 15 minutes a game. I, I don't know. I just I just feel like that. I, I don't know why I have more respect for the Knicks, I guess, than the Cavs and Magic. Well, Does that make sense? I guess I do. Yeah, and, and I hear you out, and I do think the Knicks would be a difficult matchup. But I guess the question is, do you want to dream about the Eastern Conference Finals? Or do you want to just say, hey, man, crawl before you walk. Just get out around one. Because if it's get out around one, you'd rather play Orlando, in right. my opinion. You'd rather play Cleveland. That's probably where I am But is if that. you're trying to get dreamy here and think about further, Kurt is right. Like, if the goal is, guys, we can make the Eastern Conference Finals, you'd rather be the sixth than the five, in my opinion. Because that would mean Knicks and then Bucks, and we'll see about Giannis. Again, the announcement is... You know, multiple weeks in all likelihood. That's going to stretch into round one. I don't think it's a guarantee. I mean, if it is Bucks Sixers two seven, I'd love to see the betting odds in that series. I mean, haven't the Sixers oh, the I Sixers win last night, I, or did uh, they finally lose? Uh, no, they won. I mean, they've won. Have they won six in a row? No, they or beat, six of okay, seven. They beat the Pistons the other night. They didn't play last night. Cleveland played last night. 
Uh, no, they they beat the Pistons a They've couple nights ago. They've been on a run ago. since yeah, Embiid's they gotten get, back. They get the Magic tomorrow night, which is a low-key big game. So, again, that that's where you can kind of get a little greedy. Now, as someone that has said, you just need to experience playoff basketball again this year. Like, it's just been way too long. I'm probably a little bit more on the get out around one, clap, progress, and play with house money after that. But again, if you want to dream big, that's where I and am. you think it's just a wild two through eight, which it is. Oh, it is. Um, then you can get a little bit more greedy. Obviously, four or five would play Boston then in round two in the Eastern Conference semifinals there. But to Kurt's point about Knicks and Pacers, you know, I think we had this conversation back in January. I want this to become a rivalry mm-hmm. because Thibodeau is very hateable. Just <laughs> and just his actions. Well, and you have the Brunson people and the Halliburton people. I mean, they're going to be battling for a team USA right, which it sounds like for a second team NBA and all those things. Sounds like they, they do get along, but still. I mean, yes, to your point, that's a great point. And, like, there were some chippy moments in that series. DiVincenzo, I remember, and I say series, I think they had one of those baseball matchups maybe where they played a couple times in a week there. So, yeah, I, I would like it. Uh, but, again, if you just want to get out around one, it's Orlando or Cleveland before it's New York. Uh, now, what, let me give you a quick update. Uh, Indiana fans may love this. I think Purdue fans will as well. Uh, there is a belief that maybe Scott Drew tells Kentucky no today. Ooh, That was a very locked-up thing. Mitch Barnhart, the AD there in Lexington, and Scott Drew have known each other for a long time. They are friends. They speak, uh, which is odd. Why an AD of another school would speak to a coach uh, in Waco, Texas. Uh, but now there is a thought that a pl- – you know the flight tracker? You guys have oh, done the flight 100%, tracker. Oh, yeah. 100%. The flight tracker is so fantastic. Scott Drew's family came well, off the plane, there, right, there or is, something? Yeah, there is a thinking – there is a plane, a flight tracker from the Lexington area up to go see Dan Hurley. That is just a thought uh, that there w- – yeah, I'm just so throwing that So once Dan out Hurley says no, then where? Dude, if, Do you if, stop if, at if, St. John's for a patino? If Hurley and Scott Drew say no, I don't know where they go. To me, and you can't listen. You can't even think about Billy Donovan. Underwood, he's got three, Pearl. He's got three. I listen. I like Bruce Pearl. I don't think Underwood ain't gonna get Kentucky fans excited. I like Brad Underwood. Well, I'm, I'm for- just saying it's not gonna get him excited. Well, no one's gonna get me Boy. excited like Tiger today. So what are you doing at ten? I mean, you got to go to Bloomington though today, don't well, you? That's the great news about the delay. Three fifty four. <laughs> You'll be out of class. You'll I just love watch- holding it. You'll be you make watch- your clubs right. <laughs> You'll be watching it on the phone. Driving back. Hopefully it won't be raining. So. Uh, thank you to Chuck Pagano, by the way. That'll be up <laughs> on the podcast great. if you missed that earlier. Yeah, everyone have a good afternoon. Dane we'll be Brugler back tomorrow. at it. Dane Brugler will talk some NFL draft with him, all the other nonsense in between. Have a good afternoon here on The Fan. I just love holding it. The Ride with JMV. A 